Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another weekly Wednesday live stream by The Insiders. I'm Peter. And I'm Mike. Hello. And we are actually not this uh, close together. No, nope, we're it's actually... It's trickery. I can uh, uh, make myself disappear easily. Exactly, exactly. And I'm gone. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Anyway, so uh, welcome to today's live stream. Uh, as usual, uh, we are keeping our distance from each other. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about these two products, uh, mainly the mouse, uh, GM41 Lightweight. Uh, but we also have a nice headset, which we will cover towards the end of the stream, of course. So uh, the small product is the big topic today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you <laughs> could say it like that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean this this thing because I, yeah, there's there's a lot to, to talk about with this uh, mouse uh, in in a good way. It's it's uh, yeah it's a great product. Um, great to see everybody joining again. Uh, see a lot of great names in the chat. Uh, Merry Christmas, already. everyone. Yeah, people. Yeah, Merry <laughs> Christmas, everybody. It's the inside joke, of course. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching on Twitch, you'll know what we mean. Um, but yeah, great to see everybody here again. I hope everybody's staying safe, obviously, uh, with uh, the current situation. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk some fun stuff. If you have any questions during the live stream, of course, drop them in the chat. We'll try to pick them out as we go, uh, answer any questions that we think will, you know, are interesting uh, for, the, for, the, for the stream, for the information that we're providing. I love your green screen setup. Thank you. <laughs> we, we try, we try. And we've got a nice giveaway today. Yes, of course. Uh, obviously, as you can see, uh, just over my shoulder here, a little bit. Anyway, uh, we're giving away copies of Watch Dogs Legion, the game. Uh, all you have to do is go to msi.com slash you slash insider. There you can perform a couple of, uh, well, you have a link uh, where you can click to the, uh, the Gleam uh, uh, page which is the platform that we use for the giveaway. There you can register and uh, perform a couple of actions. The more actions you perform, the better your chance of winning. Uh, if you are a regular viewer or you've watched more than one stream and participated in the, in the giveaway, you can uh, even apply a loyalty bonus, which gives you additional points into the mix for a better chance to win. That doesn't um, mean if you haven't watched before that you don't have a chance to win. No, of course not. Yeah. So definitely but yeah, uh, participate. Exactly, it, it won't hurt your chances. Um, so yeah, definitely claim those re, uh, yeah those those points uh, if you have them. And let's get started, shall we? Sounds like a plan. Yes. How many times? That's a great question. How many times has somebody mistakenly worn a green shirt for the stream? I want to say zero, but I think it might have been like close to greenish, where they didn't realize that it was that close to the color. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I already see someone asking for a left-handed version. Yeah. Well, you can use this house mouse um, left-handed. You just won't be able to use the side buttons. But other than that, it's it's perfectly fine to yeah. to use it if you're left-handed. Let, let's get into it. Let's get into it. let's yeah. just do a quick overview. So um, this is the product uh, GM41 lightweight, um, and it's called lightweight for a reason. Uh, because it's box, very heavy, right? It's very <laughs> heavy. Yeah. Now it punches. I, I think it's well. It's it it is good to say that it punches well above its weight. I think that would be fair to say because it is very lightweight with only uh, 65 grams. Uh, some of the features on here, but I'll, I'll basically cover them um, with the mouse. I've got it connected here to my PC as well. So here it is. This is uh, this is the GM41 Lightweight. Uh, and I already saw some people asking, oh, I hope it's got RGB. Uh, so uh, Finsterer, <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, in the, but only in the Dragon logo. So it's, uh, it's a fairly, um, yeah. Let's say it, it's got some RGB, but it doesn't overdo it. Uh, because this mouse is really all about the uh, performance and the lightweight, so basically competitive playing. Um, the shape of the mouse, to, to start with that, as you can see, it is, um, well, symmetrical, the shape, but it's not ambidextrous, so don't confuse those two things. Uh, it, it's symmetrical because, you know, if I basically cover one half with, uh, with my hand, basically you would... Uh, and you could copy paste uh, one side and then you'd, you'd have the complete mouse basically if you flip it around. Uh, the only difference being that only on one side it has these two side buttons and that's on the left side of the mouse. So if you're a right-handed user that's where your thumb would be. If you're a left-handed user that's where your pinky would be. And on the other side no buttons. Uh, very nice diamond 
pattern though, uh, which is uh, structured basically, so you can actually feel this, uh, this pattern here. Uh, very nice, grippy. Uh, also, it's a, it's a rubbery surface, uh, but very hard still. It's not soft rubber, so it also doesn't, uh, doesn't wear. Uh, it's double injection, so it's not like glued in there. It's it's completely. Uh, it's not like molded. a separate rubber flat exactly. glued on there. Yeah, it, it's molded in, so you know there's actually uh, yeah you can't really take it out or it's not it's not going to wear off or, or you know come off at any at any time. Um, it's a nice um, relatively flat shape. It's uh, it's not it's not small by any uh, stretch of the imagination. It's uh, for for most people you know I've got. I guess large-ish hands. Well, not large, but average. And for me, it's uh, very easy to, uh, yeah, to, to cover the mouse. It's a very comfortable shape, I have to say. Uh, the rest of the material is uh, is a, uh, a plastic, uh, hard plastic, uh, very thin though, uh, which adds uh, it's basically to the to the lightweight nature of the mouse. How heavy is it? Uh, 65 grams without. Uh, the cable. So basically, there, there's this thing where uh, mice weigh, of course, uh, with and without the cable. Without the cable is one of the ways to, to do it. Uh, 65 grams. I actually have a, a, a like a kitchen scale here, so I will try to show you that in a, in a few uh, minutes. Also, comparing it with some of our other mice to show you, you know, the difference of uh, of weight. Um, but that. Um, well, of course, it, for the rest, it's a, well, I want to say relatively simple mouse. It, it focuses really on the essentials. So you just basically have your two main buttons. You have your scroll wheel and you've got your, your side buttons on one side. And that's, that's it for uh, as far as buttons go, at least the ones that you can access uh, on the fly while you're gaming. Because you might notice there's nothing here, right? I mean, you can, with the sensor that it has, which is a, a PMW uh, 3389, which is a very high-end sensor, more about that later. Uh, but you can switch DPI settings, of course. Uh, but the DPI button is actually located on the underside here. And I'll tell you later on why that is. Because you might think, well, that's uh, a bit di more difficult to reach while gaming. That's true. Uh, this is a mouse really for FPS, first person shooter gamers, uh, competitive in that uh, as well in that respect. And most FPS gamers will basically have one or maybe two uh, DPI settings that they settle on, and uh, very few FPS players actually switch D, uh, DPI in-game. Uh, but if you have to, it, you can still do it uh, with the click of a button here. Uh, we have 100% PTFE, or Teflon is the more common used name in English, uh, mouse skates or feet as you can see, um, and they are shaped in a way that they also glide very well. So this mouse uh, is very easy to glide on any, well, most surfaces, I would say. We do recommend to use something like a mouse pad. Um, soft is, is preferred, because on hard mouse pads, uh, you know, for example, these skates will wear out just a bit quicker, obviously, because it just grates away at them. Um, yeah, and again, it does have some RGB in there. The cable is what we call uh, a friction-free cable. And what we, what we mean by that is, I think another uh, word for it is, is paracord, right? Um, yeah, that's a common name for it. Indeed. Yeah, that's a more common name for it. Um, and what that means is basically it is braided. I'm um, not sure if you guys can see this. Maybe I can hold it up close. I don't know if it'll, it'll focus on this part. But. It is a braided cable, but the braiding of the cable is very, uh, is much tighter and, and finer than uh, on most other braided cables that we have. Which basically means that um, if you slide it along a surface, like a mouse pad, like here, it will cause much less friction than the traditional braided cables, which I'm not saying they snag, but they just have a little bit more resistance while sliding up and down. And this cable actually basically just glides pretty much like the skates on your mouse. It's, it's very, uh, very, uh, yeah, smooth, I think and is the word. And the thing is, the, the cables, these kind of special cables, also the paracord, uh, yes. for example, they always look kind of thick, but actually they're much more flexible than a regular braided cable. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And But in this case, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's, it's not, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of flexible, but it's not like the most flexible cable I've ever used, I mean, to be honest here. Um, so don't... Uh, 
I think maybe a mouse bungee could kind of help out uh, if you really want to make sure that you uh, have the least possible resistance. Uh, but even then, you know, the, the sleeving of the cable itself, the friction-free sleeving, will also definitely help to reduce any kind of resistance you might have, at least for or on the surface, uh, of course. And then it's kind of your, uh, you have to make sure, let's say, uh, that on your desk, uh, when you're moving your mouse and uh, your cable doesn't, you know, hit anything, uh, that's the best thing. Just to make sure that the cable itself, as far as you can see it basically, or on your desk, uh, that it's, it's unlikely to hit anything. Uh, that's always the best thing. Or if you're going to loop it through, for example, the, uh, the monitor stand, which is quite common these days, to make sure that it has enough leeway that it will not, uh, for, for as much as you move it, that it will never um, you know, get caught uh, or that you ha don't have enough cable there. Uh, so make sure you, you have enough cable. I see a couple of questions in chat. Um, let me see. How heavy is the cable? Well, we can actually calculate that later because we can measure it with and without cable. So yeah. uh, later on with the kitchen scale, we will take a look at that. Uh, how much does it cost? I think the MSRP, and this is again is in, in, in Europe, uh, including VAT. So the, this is taxes, and again, this varies a lot. Um, should be around uh, 49.99, so like 50 euros ish. Uh, I've also seen, I think it's uh, for in the UK, it's like uh, 49.99 uh, pounds, and in the US, I guess it will be somewhere in the range of uh, 45 to 49 dollars ish. Um, and for this. Uh, for the configuration and for the, 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 for example, the sensor that's included, which is very high end, uh, that's a very competitive price. And also for a gen in general, a lightweight mouse. Um, and this yeah, is very lightweight, high end sensor. Yeah, exactly. That, that combination. Um, yeah, those mice tend to be quite a, a high price rate, or well, high, high higher than uh, um, for fifty dollars or fifty euros in general. Um, so quite competitively priced. Um, and a really, really great mouse for, uh, for that investment. Um, Zoti is asking on YouTube, are those MSI glasses? Yes, they include <laughs> Dragon View and everything. Exactly. And uh, less blue light, of course, which I'm uh, using at the moment. <laughs> so if you see some blue reflections there, then that's what causes, what's causing it. Fire X Boy Game is asking on YouTube, guys, do you see the chat or not? Yes, we do. Uh, no. <laughs> just kidding. Yes, we do. Indeed. That feature is not in the MSI glasses. So no, Peter cannot no, no. see. It's not, it's not a HUD. It. Like it doesn't have a head-up display here or a power meter. Like it's over nine thousand. That's unfortunately not. Uh, Troy is asking: Is there a recommended grip style? Well, actually, you can use this mouse uh, palm grip, claw grip, fingertip yeah. grip, whatever shall I, you like. Shall I try to demonstrate a couple? Yeah, I let's don't know if we can. Uh, let's see if I can do this without like being really really awkward here. Um, so. I think uh, what what is what is this this grip called? I think this is claw grip. Uh, this is somewhere between claw, claw and, palm. and palm. I would exactly, say exactly, yeah. Because I I do tend to have my palm like resting on the on the mouse, and depending on your hand size, again, this is this is always very difficult to see to say what is like the the best grip because it depends on your hand size and your preference, obviously. Uh, but I think this mouse is kind of like. Yeah, you can do a lot with it because it, it, it is still large enough for uh, people like me to, to apply a, a palm grip where if, I, if the, sh the mouse was a bit shorter, obviously that wouldn't be an option. So I would be forced to, to have like the, the claw grip. This is the claw grip, guys. Um, but yeah, you can, you can quite easily and comfortably hold it in your hand uh, like that. Uh, the palm grip is really when you rest your palm on it and just basically have that. And in that case, my fingers would pretty much slide off the edge. So it's not for really me, it also for differs me. per mouse what I use. When I use a right-handed mouse, I tend to use palm grip. And for symmetrical mouse like this one, I tend to use claw grip. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that, if that also has to do with like size, uh, per se, as in if the right-handed mice tend to be a bit more beefy in the, in the back, yeah, if you know what I mean. Usually they're slightly bigger also, exactly. I would say. Exactly, yeah, to fill, kind of, yeah, fill, fill your, your hand, palm yeah. anyway, yeah. Um, F Metal 2 is asking, do you have a heavy version or adjustable one? No, uh, this is purely a lightweight. I mean, we have different gaming mice, obviously. We've got uh, everything from uh, GM10, GM11, which is more entry level. Um, uh, not to say that those are specifically lighter. Um, 
but you know we've got a lot, a lot of different mice and most of them are let's just say generally um, a bit heavier than this one and uh, I, let me think I think we have one mouse that does have like is adjustable in the weight and I'm just trying to think is that the GM20 Elite actually wait because I have those mice here so maybe I can check uh, here's a, a GM30 so this uh, I'm also going to uh, compare the weight this one does not have uh, any weight uh, adjustable weight system as you can see the, the bottom is completely closed that's usually where the weights will be located uh, but we can compare them later on on the scale and I've got a GM50 oh, sorry a GM20 Elite here um, also not there was a mouse that had it I'm just trying to figure out which one it was but it will be maybe GM11 or something had it not quite sure anyway uh, but yeah we, we, I think we do have some of these mice but um, with with uh, the weights but we do tend to notice that generally gm 8 it is by the way sorry gm oh there you go gm 8 yeah there you go so it's it's uh, our most entry level mouse basically still a good mouse um, but we do tend to notice that these types of uh, features like the the weight uh, adjustment system um, you know most people just go with a certain weight and then leave it like that so you basically only configure it once uh, to your liking obviously and then you leave it like that but that's why most people will just choose a mouse that it is the weight and the shape that they prefer and then they yeah they you don't really have to change it um, and also you will see that there are quite a large number of varieties when it comes to weight and shapes i've just got a couple of them here but yeah we'll see that in a minute also um, a trend we're seeing especially for people who play first person shooters they usually want to have their mouse as light as possible yes um, yeah. So that's also why you see more and more uh, lightweight mice. Um, and you also see that if you have a weight system included, that many users will just throw out the weights and yeah. want to have it as light as possible. Yeah. And I mean, so, so the lightweight, right? So why is that a trend? I think we can, we can answer that very easily, which is if, you, if the mouse is very light, it means you have less inertia while moving your mouse. So if you want to make you know, quick flicks and quick shots, especially in competitive shooters, uh, think about CSGO, Valorant, uh, but also arena shooters, which Mike is a big fan of, uh, you know, Quake Live. Quake, Unreal Tournament, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Unreal Tournament. Um, you know, you're going to be you're going to be swiping all over the place because usually these people tend to use a lower sensitivity or at least you know, to be as accurate as possible. And um, so that means that they will use a lot of space and so a lot of swiping, a lot of surface area. Um, and if you do that, and especially if you want to change directions uh, really fast like this, um, then having a lighter mouse means that you, you have less inertia to overcome that initial, uh, yeah, to, to start that movement basically. So that just makes it faster. Uh, and that. it just kind of feels like you, you're not you're just moving your hand if it's light enough you, you almost don't notice the weight of the mouse which is the best possible thing i guess so you just have the feeling that you're just moving your mouse uh, sorry your hand very intuitively without uh you know dragging any weight around yeah and especially low sensitivity players like me they throw around a lot with their with yep. their mouse yeah and then it's it's especially beneficial to have a lighter mouse and also one that you can easily pick up um, yes. to s basically put it in the center of your mouse pad again. Yeah, <laughs> so basically Mike will be doing things like this a yep. lot, right? He's, he's, I you know, basically constantly... use the whole table yeah. when I'm playing a shooter. <laughs> um, uh. Fincer is asking, does this mouse also come wireless? Can't say too much about that, but um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, I think we are You're looking into it. Said something with that. Yeah, I think I think we are looking into it, uh, but it, it, it really depends uh, on you know. Again, this is a lightweight mouse. Uh, if you if you want to make it wireless and still keep the lightweight formula, formula, obviously lightweight for a wireless mouse will be a, a bit of a different weight category, maybe. But still, you want to. You need a battery, basically. Exactly, you need a battery, which which will inevitably make things a bit heavier. Obviously, if you want to have a decent uh, battery that lasts a, a while, so. Again, we're looking into it, and uh, maybe, maybe sometime uh, uh, later this year or something. Who knows? Depending on how fast things go. Um, <laughs> physics class. Oh, you have no idea. We're just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon pad included? Uh, no. Uh, so it's only a mouse. I mean, come on. In this box, you really want to fit a mouse pad in here? No. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, we. 
we have some really nice mouse pads available as well if you're still looking for them obviously but uh in our experience most people will already have a mouse pad or uh you know have one that they've uh, yeah they've basically settled on but you can always get one obviously <laughs> what if the box unwrapped into a mouse pad holy crap max bunny so basically that you package the mouse into a mouse pad yes no uh, yes <laughs> but yeah yeah yes yeah <laughs> And what, if, and what if you could eat it? No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing my mind here, guys. Blowing my mind here. Um, yeah, uh, seeing uh, people asking about DPI as well. So let's get into that a little bit more. Um, obviously, one of the main things that a, a mouse is built around is the sensor. Now, uh, in the past, you had, uh, for example, laser sensors and, and optical sensors. And, and before that, you Ball had those, those little, <laughs> yeah, the, the balls there, right? So you had to move in it. After a while, there, there was dust that built up in there, so you actually had to clean the ball and then put it back in and stuff like that. Um, and yes, the mouse is actually released. Yeah, I think it, it started uh, sales yesterday, so it should be available in most countries, but pending stock, obviously. I remember in high school, those balls always disappeared out of the mice. <laughs> yeah, but... So you had the school library, and then you had a mouse without a ball. <laughs> Either that, or they were like filled with really disgusting stuff. Yeah. Um, because they just got used so much and people never cleaned them so they got like hairs in them and stuff and all kinds of dust and I don't know anyway uh, that would increase the weight of your mouse as well by the way if you didn't clean it <laughs> but uh, yes can you please show us the mouse yes I've been showing it to you for a while now um, if there's any specific things you want to know by the way so the sensor in here is an optical sensor it's a, a PMW 3389 so uh, that's a PixArt uh, optical sensor which is uh, one of the top of the line mouse sensors uh, to throw some numbers your way because uh, I've, se I've seen people asking about it in the chat uh, it can go up to 16,000 DPI uh, or CPI but we're gonna get into those terms a little bit as well um, and what that actually means because I mean there's a lot of numbers here um, and yeah some people just think okay higher is better which is true but there's more to it, let's put it that way. Um, it uh, also has 400 IPS, that's input per second. It's No, inches per second. <laughs> no, that's not... Yes, no, it's, it's for the tracking speed. Oh. IPS is inches per second. Okay, inches per second, anyway. So uh, it can track up to uh, 400 IPS or inches per second. And uh, you've got fift up to 50 Gs of acceleration that this thing can handle. Now, acceleration is also a term that's used in multiple ways. Uh, one that will instantly get people's attention like, oh, acceleration, that's bad, I need to disable acceleration. Uh, this is an acceleration value that is uh, somewhat useful, but it's, it's not bad. Uh, as in, the, the higher that this acceleration, uh, the, the, the more uh, acceleration it can handle. As in, an acceleration is in a quick, change of direction uh, for example when you're swiping as i demonstrated before yeah, when well. you throw it around your table and <laughs> yes exactly when you, when you throw it around like this and you're, you're moving one way but then you you quickly think no i need to swipe the other way there will be a lot of g's uh, i don't have a, a, a you know an acceleration or an, an accelerometer i think it's called uh, you know that we could actually measure it that would be interesting uh, to see how many G's you actually pull uh, on your mouse or they have to endure uh, while you're you know, gaming in full speed sometimes. Um, but this, this one can handle up to 50 G's of uh, acceleration before it can, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, at least that it can keep accurately tracking, um, which is, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty high. And again, <laughs> Troy is saying in chat, Mike is the nerdy kid in class who answers all the questions. <laughs> questions yeah. well in school i wasn't but usually the topics were not really of my liking i no. think that was the thing <laughs> unless if it was, it was computer, about mice then sure. unless it was computer class yeah <laughs> if it was computer class okay. uh, is, is it, it bluetooth? bluetooth no it's not no this is just a wire mouse. yes um but we're, we're going to dive into the, the the dpi and and show you basically uh what it does, but also what most people tend to use and, and what exactly happens when you uh, when you change it, uh, why you should or why you shouldn't change it. Because um, there's, there's a couple of variables there to think about to make sure at least that you have a good experience, let's put it that way. 
Uh, what is the best mouse pad for the uh, GM41? I would say one with the smoothest surface. So we have a couple of mouse pads that have a really silky uh, smooth surface. And I would say those are the perfect ones. I think it's the uh, GD70, which is a, a big one. Like, uh, you know, you can put your, both your keyboard and your mouse on there or your, your laptop and your mouse. And uh, GD40 or 30 out of my head, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I think in general, a yes. cloth pad would be best. Cloth, and then as smooth as, <laughs> because, because again, this mouse is all about basically speed and being able to move it at maximum speed across the surface. So the smoother the surface, that will help, obviously. So that's why I'm saying a smooth surface uh, cloth pad is probably the best match. Also cloth pads, they tend to be bigger than hard pads. Um, yes. And this mouse is especially interesting, in my opinion, for the medium to low sensitivity gamers. Um, because of the lightweight um, and another benefit of course of a cloth pad is that it doesn't wear out the, uh, the feet of the mouse um, as fast as a, as a hard pad would do. Exactly and uh, I'm seeing uh, Edison Rama asking uh, if I would suggest this one for CSGO. Yes, I, I've actually been, been using it. Uh, that's basically one of the main shooters. If I'm playing a shooter that's, that's basically the shooter I play. Um, and it's great for that game. Um, I think especially for competitive titles. Yes. Yeah. This is a very suitable option. So CSGO, Correct. Valorant, Overwatch, yeah. uh, Quake, Arnold Tournament, Arena shooters, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, the, the faster the game, the more benefit you will also have of a lighter mouse, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I'm seeing uh, GG well played tech, I guess, or GGWP tech. Uh, Mousepad smoothness is subjective. Uh, he says he likes rougher surface for more control. Smooth just makes him overshoot. But also, cloth this is always in, a personal yeah. thing. Um, and I cloth mean, patch you also have in different flavors, basically. Exactly, but this more is more rougher surface. It, it, it's for me like I'm saying in general, what would be the the best synergy, uh, basically, with the unique properties and and like why you would basically buy this mouse, or at least the objective of this mouse, which is to have the least possible resistance, so you can just move across the, the surface as smooth as possible. Again, based on your own preferences, it, it's like the shape of a mouse. One person likes a symmetrical shape, the other person likes a right-handed shape more. Uh, one person likes a very light mouse, the other person prefers a heavier mouse. It's all down to you in the end. So I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's just what feels best for you and what matches are best very with your style. Subjective products. It's all it is. It's all about the experience. And this is a word that's being thrown around, thrown around, of course. But it it is. This is something that, I mean, in the past, we Mike, we were talking about this earlier today as well. Like, mm -hmm. hey, can you still remember one of your first gaming mice? And uh, I mean, I was I was really a, a noob when it comes to that. I was playing with a, a I don't know, I guess a Microsoft Intelli mouse, you know, one of those things, a uh, really long time ago. And then when I got my first mouse, real gaming mouse, at least it was marketed that way, Intelli I was really mouse disappointed. Intelli mouse is very good actually for shooters. You just had to overclock your polling rate yeah, at the time. It is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but but anyway, uh, and I got my first gaming mouse, and I remember that I just, you know, I didn't fiddle around with the settings. I didn't even really understand all the things that they were talking about, like DPI and whatever. Uh, I just thought, look, this they tell me this mouse is supposed to be more accurate and, and make me better in, in my game with shooting and stuff. And after like an hour of playing in CS, I think it was Source at that time, I was missing every damn shot <laughs> because my timing was off and, and, and probably, you know, there were some things going on there. But it was completely different and I had to get used to it. But also I didn't really customize settings back then, which gave me a pretty bad experience. And I feel, felt pretty bad at that point about my first gaming mouse because I thought, look, I'm spending this much more money and I, I mean, I'm getting worse results for it. <laughs> um, anyway, and yeah, I guess a lot of people might have had that experience at some point. When you switch to a new mouse, either your old one broke or you just tr wanted to upgrade to a mouse which you thought was better or you, you, your friend said, oh, you have to get this mouse because it's really good. Um, and when you tried it, it didn't really match your style or, you know, your But apart your from play. preference, it's also like, for example, if you have bigger hands, yes. you will usually uh, have want to have a bigger mouse yep. than people who have really small hands. So it's a, it also depends very much per person yes, and not even only the type of usage or the type of games you play or your sensitivity, but even just a simple thing, do you have big hands or not? Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of factors to consider there. Uh, <laughs> Raisin Palasigu is, uh, is saying I use GM11 mouse because of the RGB effect. 
uh, everybody has a different reason for, for choosing a certain mouse or choosing a certain, uh, yeah, certain shape, certain weight. Uh, there's a lot of things. Um, uh, what, what's GG the size? Well Play Tech is asking, yeah. speaking of the mouse size, what's yeah. the size of the GM41? It looks big for small Asian hands, he says. It, it probably is maybe a bit big for a small Asian hands. I would say it's, it's, f it's a medium-sized mouse, I would yeah. say, but for a lightweight mouse, it's relatively large because they tend to be smaller also to, yeah. to save weight, basically. And I think if you want the exact uh, uh, dimensions, they are on the product page. So you can go over to Amazon.com uh, and uh, go to the product page. Um, and then there, you know, in, in specifications, you, you will have the exact dimensions. Uh, but again, that those are just numbers. Uh, it does say something, especially the weight and stuff. But again, this is something you kind of have to experience because it also the shape matters a lot. So the size yeah. can be a certain way, but if the shape is in a way that doesn't really uh, fit well with your with your hands or your grip, then um, yeah, it's not going to work out for you. Um, is the GM41 lighter than the M99 with honeycomb design? So one of the things, I think that's a really good comment and a really good question. I don't know the M99 specifically or the exact weight. Um, I know that this isn't the, the lightest mouse around, uh, especially compared to some of the, like for example, the, the Logitech Ultra, way, uh, Ultra Lightweight. You have uh, the, the Model O, uh, right? You have uh, Final Mouse and some of these mice with uh, the honeycomb structure, which is basically an open structure. Uh, where you see the honeycomb shares basically cut out of the out, out of the back or the surface of the mouse. Uh, this one is, as you can see, closed. So there's no holes in there, not, not on the top, not on the bottom. Um, and we've done different things to make the mouse very light, which, which I will go into in just a minute. Um, but is it lighter than that one? I, I don't know exactly. Uh, I do know that this one feels really, really light. Uh, and the trick about it uh, is to make the mouse light without losing any structural integrity. So basically it still ne needs to uh, feel sturdy. So not that when you hold it in your hands and you kind of like squeeze it that you think, all right, this is going to break or something, uh, which in this case is definitely not uh, the case. This is still a very sturdy little mouse. By the way, I got the measurements for people who are interested. It's um, the length is 130.1 uh, millimeters. All right. Then a width. That's here, basically. Yeah, that's um, 67 millimeters. Yeah. And the height. That's 38.3 millimeters. Yeah. But again, the best thing to do is to basically just to try and find it in a shop or maybe see if you can, if there's a shop that you can, uh, in most of the European countries at least, you can send things back if you in the end don't want them or, or sorry, don't, uh, yeah. Yeah, in the end, you don't like them or they don't work as expected. With a mouse like this, I think it's best to just give it a try and see if you like it or not. Because again, that's really the only way to, to see if the size is one thing, the weight is another, and the shape is also a very important thing. Uh, maybe, uh, arguably, according to some, to some people, the weight, uh, sorry, the shape is the most important thing. Nowadays, Again, the argue, I said bigger arguably. Bigger topic. See, yeah. he's already arguing it. <laughs> no, it's, no, I actually agree, but uh, in the past, sensors were yeah. not as good as they are nowadays. Yeah. So there were a lot more mouse, mice that were really bad, basically, sensor-wise. So mm. by then, I would say the sensor was the most important thing. Yeah. But nowadays, because there are multiple very good sensors, yes. um, shape is becoming a bigger topic, basically, shape and weight. So um, when we say lightweight, right? I mean, again, it's a trend. Uh, and we see some are using honeycomb structure, uh, ours is not. Um, what is the definition of a lightweight mouse? Um, and I, I think I read somewhere, again, I, I don't think it's like an official, there's no official definition for it. Uh, but there is like a common definition for it, which I think is uh, anything under 80 grams. I think it's considered lightweight. And some people already think that under 100 grams is light. Yeah. And some people think that uh, 80 grams is still very heavy. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, it, it's subjective, of course. Yes. But like in general, I think under, under 80, 80 grams, grams is, is, is generally considered yeah. to be lightweight. Yes. Um, and so we can grab a kitchen scale here that I brought or borrowed. 
So what are we cooking? Uh, mouse stew. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and I mean, this is a little bit dodgy because this mouse is still connected and it's just the cable on here, but I'll just put uh, this mouse on here and see if I can get the glare out. Uh, here we go. 64, 65 grams. So as you can see, that's exactly what it is. And this is a GM41 lightweight. If I take it off, it's going to reset to zero again, obviously. Um, now I'm going to take, for example, the GM30. So as you see, GM30. And I'm going to put that one on. Uh, where's the... Damn. 95. So quite a bit heavier, right? That's like 30, 30 grams or more. By the way, on the feet of that mouse, you can see what happens if you use uh, a rough surface, a harder surface. On this one? Yeah. You can see that it stretches, it scratches a bit on the on the feet. Yeah. You guys see that, right? There's some pretty. So that's deep for scratches. example, if you use it directly on a table or yeah. on certain rough hard pads. And that, you know what happens then is there there probably will be at some point like I don't know some little grains of sand or something, and then they will pretty much get almost embedded, uh, or at least they will make their way and scratch some uh, something awful into this. Uh, <laughs> into the, the mouse yeah, so feet. usually a cloth mouse pad is, is better yeah. for your mouse feet. Uh, if you're going for longevity, yes. Yeah. Um, and here is the uh, GM20 Elite, for reference also. 109. And here you also see this is a more ergonomic design, so this is made yes. for right-handed users. Correct. And they tend to be slightly larger and heavier yeah because this is a mouse that most people will use in a palm grip for example i can also let's see if i can put them next to each other uh, so you can also compare the sizes and i'll go from the same order that i just just a mouse management <laughs> yes exactly i'll try to put them next to each other here we go uh, how do we best show this so this is a gm41 lightweight this is the GM30, and this is the GM20 Elite. So especially this one, but it's more like the, the some of the shapes, like this mouse button sticking out, of, of course. But you can see it's also a bit it's wider, fatter, yeah, yeah. W wider, basically. So it, it really fills your, your palm here. Um, this one, the th GM30, is also is quite slim, as you can see. Uh, this is also, by the way, a symmetrical shape. Uh, not. Uh, ambidextrous again because it only has the side buttons on uh, on one side on on the left side for the right-handed um, and then the gm41 lightweight is a bit it's a bit longer a bit taller i would say than uh, and a bit more filled out especially towards the uh, the mouse buttons i already see a disassembly request in the chat yeah uh, i think we we're gonna do that uh, we're going to on. tear one apart and yes. also show the switches and stuff like that yes. the internals exactly um, do we want to have a look at uh, the, the cable weight as well, so that we actually take the, because I have a, another sample here with the cable attached. I'm not sure, I'm going to have to see if I can roll the cable up in a way that it will stay on the same surface. But then we could measure to, to see what the weight of the cable is. You take a couple of questions in the meantime while I uh, um, mess around yes. with the cable. Um, Birch is saying on YouTube chat in the past a heavy mouse was more preferred by FPS players. What changed now, and should they pref um, uh, should they prefer a lightweight one? I don't think that heavy mice were preferred by FPS players. But even if it was, um, it, maybe, it, maybe of course it was depends per person. But in general, like especially low sensitivity and more competitive players, like playing those esports titles like CS:GO, like Valorant, stuff like that. Um, I think they always tend tend to prefer the lighter weight mice already in the, pa in the past as well. Um, most of them, especially the competitive ones, they, for example, if there was a weight system, they never put the weights in. I, d I don't even remember when, I mean, maybe this was because of a lack of, of lightweight mice in the past, because I don't even remember when this started becoming a thing. I think we can... Uh so we've got with cable, so I just put the cable on here and, and remember there's like a little rubber cable tie thing here and, and a sticker and I mean I've just put it 
out of the box. Uh, but that adds, uh, what was it? Uh, 65, so that's like 40 grams, I would say. Yeah, That's accurate, right? Yeah. And I mean, that's a cable, that's the connector, so it's in total. So I hope that answers your question. What sensor does it have? The PMW3389 from yes, Pixar. Yes, correct. Um, Kuhn is saying, I prefer heavy mice and high sensitivity. Light mice feel so cheap, he says. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually, like the first impression if you, if you hold a mouse like this, and, and if your reference point is um, expensive things are heavy, which by and large... That's uh, a common it, association. Yes, it's a very common make. association because, you know, the, 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 like, a heavy, like a big expensive stereo was always really heavy and then usually heavy, heavy things tend to be exp expensive and the other way around. Um, but it's, it's not all about cheap or expensive. I mean, this mouse, again, like we're going for a competitive price as well, so we're not going for hyper expensive. Um, but this thing is lightweight because of, uh, yeah, n not because of cost reduction or anything like that or trying to be cheap. It's, it's lightweight because that is the goal of the product. Um, and yeah. actually, it, it's, it might even en have ended up more expensive because of that. And I don't, I don't think that lighter necessarily feels cheaper personally no but a lot of people will have yeah, that association yeah. right so the yeah. first time you hold it i mean th that's the thing right if you hold it and you think well that's that's really light yeah, so I it know, must it's, be it's, cheap it's an association many people make but also yeah. for example compare it to to a tennis racket or a badminton racket yeah. um if you they, play that sport you know that a lighter racket is actually preferred yeah. so that's something people want to a certain extent but yes, yes. in general uh, uh, if you have a, a heavy racket it might feel really strong and sturdy um, but it won't benefit you in the game. Um, and basically it's like, like that with competitive shooters as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd say in that sense, it's, it's quite comparable. But I mean, the, the real test of the quality is of course in how it performs in game. And we're gonna showcase that a little bit later also versus, uh, well, I've got a, like a really run of the mill like office a, mouse. It's an office mouse, yeah. It's an, uh, I'm this gonna, is just full, like, full disclosure, it's a Logitech RX 250. This um, is just like, this is like one of the, the, the mice you had at school, for example, your PCs at school would have, or your... You, the, one, Depends one of the, on your age, if the... <laughs> yeah, of course, but you know, or one of the mice that you, yeah. you would get free with a, with, a, with a laptop, or not a gaming laptop, obviously, because those would be This like is just one mice. of the most standard mice yes. possible, basically. Yeah. But we wanted to do a comparison, you know, as in, to show you that there are differences in, in mouse sensors, and of course, this is an extreme example, but we'll show you this later on as well. Um, also, just to make that sure, this is not designed for gamers. No, 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 no. Um, exactly. So it's it's yeah, it, it's a it's comparison. It's not intended for that, but we're going to show you, for example, how does exactly. uh, a basic mouse sensor that you will fi find in an office product yep. uh, compare to one that you will find in a in a higher end gaming mouse. Yeah. Sticky UK says I still use a ball mouse. Yeah. I think you're one of the very few nowadays, then. Probably, but hey, if you like it, then yeah. why not keep rocking Don't it. break it because it will be hard to find a replacement problem. Exactly, yeah. I don't know if, though, if they make the, those anymore, even still. Yeah, trackballs they do still make, I think, but like... like the trackball ball is that they have the ball on top, right? On top, yeah, and that you control it with your... I, I, I was rummaging around in one of the b old boxes in my attic a while ago and I found one of those. I had <laughs> one of those. They were terrible as in if you're trying to play games with i mean it's yeah. no just no it's <laughs> can you imagine having to roll a ball on top of the mouse with your fingers like that that's like guaranteed to give you i actually know someone who used tunnel. to play Arnold tournament with a trackball damn he, he was not very good at our tournament either ask, maybe that explained ask him if he can play it with a dance dance revolution map <laughs> 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 that's like the next level uh, anyway, is this suggest for Valorant? Uh, yeah, uh, also uh, the competitive uh, FPS first-person shooter titles definitely, but even for, for other games they are uh, quite fine, uh, but it really depends on what you prefer. Um, and for some games, like if you have like uh, the um, role-playing type of games, RPGs, yes. I think most of those players prefer more buttons for example. Yeah. That's something you will not find on this. It's not no. targeted at those people. Of course, no. you can play an RPG with this. Yes. Um, but this mouse is really made to be 
um, the perfect choice for people who want to play competitive shooters. Yes. So if you think about CSGO, if you think about Valorant, Overwatch, stuff like that. So yeah. fast, yeah. Uh, competitive shooters. And, I, and I, I can already see you guys asking, but, but, but Peter, Peter, wait a minute. Can I also do like regular office work with this? No, yes. this mouse will not wor work in, in Word or in <laughs> PowerPoint or Excel. It will just disable itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it will self-destruct if you know. Yeah. <laughs> not going to uh, do this. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course you can. It's a it mouse. Will right? So for general usage, uh, whether you're, you're, you're playing games or you're uh, doing office work or, or design work, uh, again, even maybe for design work, it really depends. But if you really want to be accurate about it, most designers, if they do, so, they, they have the, like these pens, you know, and they, they'll do it like that. Uh, but one of the added advantages of a, a gaming mouse is that they do tend to have at least the, the option to uh, be very accurate because of the sensor, because of the high accuracy of the sensor. So, yeah, that's something you could also benefit from. But it's uh, it's very situational, I guess. Trade is saying, office gamers, we exist. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, oh, you're one of the working from home types. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm supposed to be working, but uh, working. Could be, could be. Will this mouse do all of my work for me? Um, no, we haven't gotten around to programming that quite yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Depends on what kind of work you do as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Does the GM41 make you better in FPS? Peter and Mike should do a 1v1 in CSGO. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, we were thinking about that, but you know, considering the last time I, I played uh, Mike in, in any shooter, it, it was an arena shooter to be fair, but still, you know, he, he, uh, he pantsed me pretty bad. So, <laughs> and I haven't gotten much practice, so I didn't want to go over so that So now again. I don't get to play against him anymore. <laughs> exactly, yeah. We, uh, it was, uh, I had it added into my contract. <laughs> I don't want to play against Mike anymore. <laughs> like an extra, extra clause indeed. Like Mike is not allowed to play games. Yeah, anyway. No, but later on in the stream, uh, uh, Peter will do yes. some gaming demonstrations. I believe you have Valorant today? Yeah, Valorant, but I've also, I mean, I've got some other games also that we could, but uh, you know, we wanted to at least take one game that was really meant for uh, pure shooting, basically. So Valorant yeah. is one of the games where, uh, it's it's one of the pop most popular shooters as well, um, and yeah, where we can actually demonstrate some of the effects of a, a good mouse versus a mouse that's not really meant for gaming. Can you use this for playing FIFA 1999? Doesn't I that only that use a keyboard? A FIFA 1999. Does doesn't that only use a keyboard? Yeah. Can't, not sure. I I played it with a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I remember like playing really old FIFA games, and I also nowadays I play it with a controller. Oh yeah. But it's been a while since I've played FIFA. But 1999, Damn. if I if there is one FIFA that I <laughs> specifically liked, it was that one. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's uh, it, it's that time. Yeah. I see a question in chat. Have it? I missed the giveaway? Yeah. No, no. The first giveaway will be now. We're just starting. And if you haven't participated yet. Over to Peter. <laughs> ah, yeah, you can go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, there you will find a button or you can go and follow the uh, direct Gleam link that's being spammed in the chat every now and again. Uh, if you do not see it, depending on the platform you're viewing, we are streaming on uh, Facebook, Twitter, multiple instances of Twitter, um, Twitch and YouTube. Uh, usually Twitch and YouTube are uh, the best and most reliable platforms for that link, for example. Uh, just go into the, the Gleam platform, register, and uh, the more actions you perform, the better your chance of winning. It basically adds points per action that you, uh, yeah, that you perform uh, into the draw, and then the ba our back end will randomly select a winner uh, every time we, we click a button and say, just draw one winner. And we're giving away several Watch Dogs Legion keys today. Yes. We have our first winner, and it's a name that I cannot pronounce, so Damn. Peter, <laughs> good luck. Uh, well, it's an MD, so I'm not sure if an that's like a, a, a medical term. But that, sure then it should be behind the name, shouldn't it? Anyway, uh, Raihanul Islam. Congratulations, you yes. won our first game code for Watch Dogs Legion. Yes, congratulations. All right, and we're going to be giving away more uh, game codes later on this stream, obviously. So stick around if you still uh, want to have a chance to win one of the codes. 
Uh, same question in chat, where is the link? Well, there is one slightly behind Peter, msi.com slash two slash insider. But on Twitch and YouTube, uh, our bot will put it in the chat uh, once every five minutes, I believe. Yeah, it's being triggered by some commands, I think. Ah, MB sure. stands for Mohammed. Oh, there you go. Okay, right. Sorry, in that case. In that case? Yes. Mohammed Rahanul. Yes. All right, congratulations. Hope you enjoy the game. We'll send it to, out to you, of course, uh, later this week. Um, so let's continue. Um, yeah, so there are different mouse categories. I mean, Mike was uh, saying that already, uh, like there's like a general gaming mouse category. There is uh, for FPS games, uh, it's used and, and esports playing, basically FPS even uh, or competitive. It's usually the lightweight category. Uh, and of course, the mouse sensor needs to be good uh, for uh, MOBAs and, and RTS um, games like that. You, you will tend to have uh, mouse or mice with more buttons. So you even have those extreme examples with, you know, on the on the right side below the mouse or the thumb buttons, you will have maybe even more buttons where you can put uh, macros or hotkeys or Some stuff like that. Some look like a phone with all those buttons and all the numbers Yeah, basically. On it. <laughs> so you tend, you know, when you, you, you hear your phone ring, you're going to be like, like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, but yeah, look a bit, at least to me, it looked really weird. And like, I would probably Looks be fun. constantly <laughs> accidentally pressing all the buttons. So it, it's definitely not a mouse for me. Uh, but those are geared indeed for very specific um, other usages of, you know, where people want to use and, and tend to use more buttons, more uh, commands commands, uh, macros, stuff like that. Um, but I think now the time has come to uh, take one apart. That sounds good. What do you think? Yeah? All right. Um, so I have one here where I actually, because um, I don't want to disconnect the one I have in, in the PC, and I need to keep one that I can actually use to demonstrate stuff. Um, so here I, I have one as well. It's a GM. 41 lightweight and as you can see I've uh, done a couple of things so I've removed and I also want to show you what that does when you do it I've removed the skates or the the, the feet basically um, if you remove these it's a, it's a one-way trip it's a one one time thing because uh, these are not suitable to put back on basically so once you take them off if you ever decide to do that you'll basically ruin them <laughs> yeah, you, you need to make sure you have a replacement pair ready to, to put on there because yeah, the, these will not go back on and not th properly. At exactly, least. they won't be usable basically. So uh, unless you you are sure that you've got a replacement pair, don't do this. We do this so you don't have to suffer through it, obviously. Um, and then also I had to remove the uh, well. There's a sticker underneath here with your serial number and stuff like that. Basically, uh, let's see. It's uh, technical details. Yes, technical details, uh, certifications and stuff like that. It's basically, it's 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 there. So I also had to remove that because there were maybe some you can show the other mouse, the bottom of the yes R sample. That that's go. what it looks like before. <laughs> yes, this is what it should look like if yeah. you if you buy it, obviously, and if you never uh, have to touch it which obviously you don't really have to the reason why we're opening it up is because usually you just see the outside and we kind of want to show you what's going on on the inside also because that's where some of the more interesting things are uh, visible it's where the on, magic happens yeah on, on how we <laughs> managed to reduce the weight in such a way that it became uh, a lightweight mouse um, so uh, yeah let me just undo some of the screws here It's a question in Twitch chat, are you going to smash it with a hammer? Uh, no, that's Mike's thing and usually <laughs> includes or involves uh, glass. Uh, so in this case, no glass, Tempered no glass hammer. Side panels. <laughs> exactly. No, no Mike with uh, like protective gear for his eyes to protect him against splinters. So um, yeah, I don't see it happening. But <laughs> we do have a nice teardown of a mouse. So it's, that's something, right? Uh, by the way, the switches, I also saw somebody asking about that. Uh, we will see that later on as well, but uh, they are Omron switches um, rated for 60 million clicks. Um, have a very satisfying click to them anyway, and they should last a very, very long time. So uh, I've now removed four screws basically, and now I'm just going to basically, uh, well, I've got like a little wedgie thing here, uh, which I can put in between um, the space at the back. There we go. And then it should just lift free. Now, I need to be careful because when you do that, uh, here we go. 
there is still a cable connected there, as you can see. So I'm not going to yank it off or quite yet. I'm just going to gently disconnect this cable. Luckily, I'm used to you know disconnecting cables when I put some, when I uh, yank off like a, a heatsink of a graphics card because they tend to have more of these things. Um, and here we have it. So the PCB and the inside of the of the mouse. A um, couple of things I want to highlight here. Um, one is the material itself. So basically the shell is very uh, light and very thin. So one of the things that we did is to make this shell thin but still sturdy enough so that it doesn't like, uh, you can still press it and it won't deform basically. So it's still very sturdy. It can handle the weight of, your, of you pressing down on it on, at any point. Um, but this is I think the single most uh, weight saving thing that we did to, to uh, decrease the, the weight of the mouse is to make the shell thinner and, and use less material. Um, another thing that's in here, here are, uh, this is where the side buttons are located. This is a separate little piece of PCB uh, here. And one of the things we most definitely did not save weight on is uh, making sure it's still very sturdy. So also that's why you can see some of these um, points here coming through the PCB to give it more strength basically. Uh, I'll also in a minute just uh, take this one out. Then looking at the uh, at the little PCB itself, obviously you have the scroll wheel here with uh, the, the button connected to it basically so you can press down on it and it will uh, give a nice click. Uh, these are the two main buttons, the Omron switches. Um, I don't know if it will zoom in far enough, but ah, don't focus, camera. don't focus on me. Yeah, focus on this thing. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see, um, these are Omron uh, switches, and I can press down on them, give them a nice click. So these should uh, last around six million clicks. Uh, this thing here is. That's the main attraction. This is this is the optical sensor. This is the uh, PMW 3389. Uh, and what's special about this is not just that it's really high end and, and really accurate, but also that uh, it has the there's a like a little light. The way these things work is they also they work with a light and a, and a lens, and they basically measure uh, the movement while they are going. But they need a little light. Uh, to LED, basically, yeah, yeah to, to, to light uh, the surface, uh, otherwise it, it cannot read any movement. Uh, most, and, and we'll have, we have a different, like an older mouse here, uh, which I will take apart in a minute, where you will see most other mice will have like a separate light behind the sensor and then a little piece of plastic lens uh, it, it, still in between the light and the sensor itself. Now, this sensor has everything integrated into one, which is also one of the things that saves some weight. Um, so again, it's all about a few grams per thing, basically, per thing that we do to, to reduce weight. But and every little thing up. reduces the weight by yeah. a bit, and then everything together, it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 grams, for example, that you can save. Um, this here, uh, I think, is the, uh, the MCU, which is uh, basically a, a controller chip. Yeah, the microcontroller unit. Yeah. The microcontroller unit. So this this controls uh, basically the processor of the mouse. Yeah, basically the processor of the mouse. So it basically controls all the yeah all the things for even the the, uh, the RGB for example uh, on the mouse, but also uh, yeah all of the other things that need to be processed. Um, here is a little flash chip. So it's basically storage. I don't know, like f for example uh, profiles, macros, uh, but also probably firmware. Uh, will be sh stored on there. And then here, right at the end, this little white thingy, this is a very small LED. This is the RGB LED th that you could see um, shining into the dragon, basically, on the back of the mouse. Can you connect it right now? Uh, uh, so we can see the LED? I will have to see if I can roll out the cable. But maybe... So, let me see, I'll have to disconnect one of the other devices. <sighs> there you go. So basically, I just plugged in the USB cable. 
Um, <laughs> there it was green for a second. <laughs> messed green, up a green, green screen a little yeah. bit. But as you can see, it's a, it's a very nice bright LED that changes color. Clash Tube is saying on YouTube, the RGB adds one pound to the mouse. Well, it's actually an uh, SMD LED, so it's soldered directly on the, the PCB of the mouse. Yeah. This also saves a little bit of weight. That's why it's so flat, as you can see here. Yeah. Uh, and I've disconnected the mouse now, so it, there's no chance of me shorting anything out. But yeah, it's very flat. And then you can see basically on the back of the mouse here, this little cone. That's where the, the LED basically is uh, projecting its light into. And then on the other side of the cone, you have this part here. So it basically what that does is, is it basically uh, concentrates all the light towards this area here. So it doesn't uh, really emit any light in any other direction. It basically just focuses the light here. So you basically get more light output um, there. And you also get like an even distribution yes. of the light in the dragon so yes. that the top and the bottom of the dragon yeah. are also illuminated properly yes. instead of just the center. All right. Um, yeah, I can. Alex is asking, how heavy is the cone? I don't, I'm not sure if you can take that out without destroying it. No, I think that, that I one's... I think it's integrated in the shell. Yeah, yeah, that one is integrated, so I can't really take it out. But we can weigh the, the oh. shell, the top part. Yeah, what, I, what I'll... But first, let's take the, the PCB out, because now... Well, I'll take the little PCB it. out with side buttons, because then I can show you guys that the side buttons are just a little bit different than the main mouse buttons. The switches, you mean? Uh, the, sorry, yes, uh, the, yeah, underneath uh, the, yeah. the buttons, so the switches indeed. Uh. <laughs> DC and Alice saying, see, told you, smash it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, we prefer not to, because we want to keep it whole. Sometimes we do it. So, <laughs> Depends so this on the is, these are the switches underneath the side buttons. Um, and these are, I'm not sure if you can read this, but they are... Huano, I think the brand is called. And these are known to be a little bit stiffer um, than the main switches uh, by Omron, but still give a really satisfying and sharp click uh, to them. Yeah, th there we go. And because they're a bit stiffer, yes. um, it prevents accidental clicks of the side buttons, yes. because that's also where you will usually grip your mouse. Yeah. So that's a little PCB there. Now I just have basically the, the empty shell without uh, side buttons and I could indeed put that on the scales here. Let me just make sure I don't lose anything. Just enable the scale. There we go. So as you can see that's like over half the weight of the mouse is just the shell. 35. Yeah 35 out of 65. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun if this thing would now be more than half? No. So, yeah, this is actually just 21 grams, just the, the mouse and the PCB uh, here. Obviously, the cable is not on there. But, yeah, so, like I said, that's why, again, why we said um, making and saving weight on this part of the mouse, of the shell, basically, the outer part and the buttons, that's the single most effective way of, of uh, making a mouse lighter because, yeah, I always thought and believed that, you know, this, this looks very busy and it looks more like heavy, I guess. But this is one of the lighter parts of the mouse when compared to this. So, yeah, this really is one of the things that we uh, slimmed down. Um, I'm going to see if I can remove the PCB to show you guys what's going on underneath. Uh, so there's four little screws here. I see a question in chat. Um, I would try these. Does it start at 400 or 800 DPI? I believe like the default setting, the lowest one is 400 DPI. Yes, but I will show you later on in the software. You can actually choose any value, I think per 100 it switches. But yeah, uh, any value that you want anywhere in between. I'm not sure what the minimum value is in the software, but 400 mm -hmm. you can use for sure. Yeah, yeah. We will, we'll find out when we, uh, when we check it out. So these are four little screws. And then let's see what happens. Jaytro is asking, any update on the Core Liquid K series? Soon. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> so basically, this is it. This is the bottom side of the PCB. So uh, the part where the sensor, so this is like, I guess, the part of the lens. Yeah, that's the lens. 
And as you can see, I can, I can wiggle it out. This is the lens, and then there's a, a little LED inside there as well to uh, do the lighting part. This is the DPI switch. And we actually made sure that it's still, uh, like choosing a switch is not just a, a matter of throwing anything on there and anything will work, right? So we actually did some, uh, some work to uh, made sure that it, this gives like a satisfying, it, it has some weight to it, some resistance to, that's needed to press it. Um, the, the engineer told me about that, he was actually really proud of that. And it, it, I mean, I have to say, it, it, it had, does have like a, a more satisfying weight to it. Uh, also, this adds to the feeling that it's not uh, cheap, but that it's actually uh, good, yeah, quite good quality. Uh, GGWP Tags asking, how's the weight distribution of the mouse? Is it more back heavy or pretty equal across the body? Poo, that's a good question, but I would say it's pretty well distributed. Although uh, yeah, I, I would I, say it's quite equal. I also yeah. tried the mouse. I would say it's, it's relatively equal distribution yes. over the mouse. Also because the, most of the weight is in the, in the top shell. Yes. Um, yeah. And of course that one stretches all the way across the mouse. Because it might look like, because the PCB is uh, positioned slightly on the, the higher side of the mouse, I would say, so more top side. Yeah. Um, but because that's just a fraction of the weight of the mouse, yeah. um, it feels like quite an even distribution in my yeah. opinion. And you also notice that this uh, scroll wheel, I've seen a lot of mice where this is like filled with material basically, so it's like a more like a solid wheel on the inside. This one is, uh, as you can see, it's uh, yeah, completely hollow. Uh, also one of the things that of course will save weight because if this thing is like an acrylic wheel that's solid it'll be much heavier than than obviously a uh, a hollow wheel like this so everything in this mouse uh, is done to save weight including and I, I said I would come back to this part where why the uh, DPI switch is at the bottom and that's actually because doing it at the bottom as you could see means it's very close to the PCB, right? So you only require like a little bit of material like this, you know, like a little uh, button here and a little switch, a very tiny uh, flat switch at the, on the PCB. Whereas if you wanted to put it on the, on the top of the mouse, so basically on the scroll wheel, what you would have to do is you would make, have to make some uh, metal, or sorry, yeah, some um, uh, plastic or, or metal construction to lift up the mechanism to here, which would add more weight. So basically, because then, you know, your button would be somewhere here and you would have to be able to press it. So all the way in between here, you would need like some construction to get it connected to the PCB. So again, that would add weight. That's, that's the reason why it's at the bottom, to save weight. Uh, Clement is asking, when will the MAG CH120i will be available in Canada? I don't know for any specific region, so it's best to check that with your uh, local reseller. They can give you a, a better picture of, of when they expect certain products. Yes. Because this, this really differs per region. We are, for example, based in Europe, um, so we don't have a, a clear view of what the situation of any specific product is in North America. <laughs> uh, so best to check with your favorite shop. Yes. Uh, Jaywar is asking, does it have a scroll wheel loosener? So I think you mean like um, that you can, for example, use it to scroll through very long documents. Oh, that. Uh, no, 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 not that I know that, of. That's a, a feature that, in my opinion, is mostly interesting for an office mouse. Yes. Um, because of those large documents. But usually, at least when I play a game, I'm not going through my weapons <laughs> by... <laughs> Smacking that scroll wheel and just letting it grind. Yeah. Uh, so no, it's just a regular scroll wheel with yes. distinguishable steps. Yes. Yeah. Still very distinguishable indeed. Um, so now we have this mouse disassembled here, the GM41. Um, we've actually uh, went into our archives and found uh, a, one of our uh, very uh, old mice. This is a, uh, a, it is an MSI product. The MSI Star Mouse. GS502. This one is really old um, and has been used. As you can see, I've also removed the, the mouse feed here to be able to open it up because I kind of want to show you uh, some of the differences. Oh, yeah, and of course, there is uh, there, the, here. This one did have a weight uh, changing system. So there was like a little flap on here that Mike just brought. 
of course, we removed that because we, yeah, we're not really talking about that right now. Because what I want to show you is also some of the insides of, of a mouse like this, uh, to, so that you have some frame of reference of what you just saw on the GM41. Um, so let me quickly remove. I already removed most of the screws, so this didn't take. This sh wouldn't take too long. Um, Decent else asking how much pressure could it endure? Uh, enough. <laughs> what, what do you yeah, plan to do with it? <laughs> it also depends on how you put pressure on it. Is it like on a small yeah. part of the mouse, or? spread across the mouse but uh, i don't know the exact answer i mean for gaming and if you plan to like i don't know f like whack it like that i think it would still be okay even though we don't recommend it obviously but don't uh, whack it too hard I would it, say. it doesn't <laughs> it, it doesn't feel uh very fragile if that's what you're asking it doesn't really feel fragile or something like that uh it, it just feels like a you know a lightweight but still very sturdy mouse uh, i would say all right, so this mouse, a little bit of different style, obviously, it's, it's a right-handed uh, one as well. But we were more interested in the fact that it's, it's a lot older as well, so we can really see, and it's not designed to be lightweight. So as you can see, um, there's a, a PCB on here with the side buttons, uh, the switches, and the PCB is green, green so yeah. <laughs> you don't really see it. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of material in here. Um, and also, uh, there's the, the, the DPI switches on here, and this uh, piece of PCB is also covering that. So basically, this is one of the parts that will also handle the, the DPI switching part, and then there's a little ribbon cable that connected here um, from the mouse to that PCB. Um, and then inside the mouse, as you can see, let's see if we can make this nice and visible. Get the ribbon cable out of the way. Jeez, that thing keeps jumping up and down. Um, this is the sensor. I think this one is also optical, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, there is a, I think this is the LED here. Let me see if I can remove that. I don't think I can. So this, this thing is a bit harder to disassemble. Uh, but yeah, this is the LED. Yeah, it's the LED. This, this sensor is actually positioned horizontally yes. in the mouse. And this is, uh, this is the, the lens here, this, this little transparent plastic thing underneath. So these parts, for example, are not, we didn't have to include on the GM41 because it was all part of that sensor one unit. One neat package. Yes, one neat package that, that basically just includes everything. Uh, and then as you can see here, there's another PCB uh, for the rest of the mouse. The scroll wheel is, is a bit more, uh, I think this side is better to show you guys is a bit more filled out. It's still um, almost hollow, but it's still, you know, th this thing is a bit heavier, obviously. Uh, and there's in general just a lot more material uh, in inside as well. And of course, it, this is basically the space where the um, the weights, the, the interchangeable weights are located. David is asking how much DPI do you use to play first person shooters? I personally use 800 DPI. Uh, me too. I, uh, I found out. Actually, I didn't really pay attention to it. I, what I usually just did was just, you know, click the middle mouse button and, until I found something that, you know, I found comfortable and, and accurate. Um, and it turned out that was also 800. But still, we do play on quite a different sensitivity. Yes. Because even though we both play at 800 DPIs, I put my sensitivity in the game much lower than Peter does, for example. Yeah. Uh, David James is asking, when will this mouse be released? Uh, it was released yesterday, actually. So it should be on its way to shops or, or maybe already in shops, depending on your region or country. Um, but yeah, it should basically be making its way to the market uh, very soon or right now already. Um, it's Angels asking, they told which sensor it is. Yes, yes it's the uh, PMW3389 yes. from Pixar. Correct. Um, okay, maybe uh, let's go for a second giveaway before we move on to the next part. Sounds like a plan. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Yes. Or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, uh, our bot will put it in chat once every five minutes. That's a direct link to Gleam. Yes. Um, within Gleam, you can perform several actions. Um, the more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Uh, oh, I see a regular viewer has won our next game code. Red Baron, congratulations. You also won a Watch Dogs Legion. So it's game. like Red Baron, but Red not Baron, Baron but Baron with, with, with an, an M. M for Mike. 
<laughs> yeah, you also won one of the game codes. Keep an eye out on your mailbox because we'll email it to you in the coming days. If you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so. And if you're a returning visitor, make sure also to claim your loyalty bonus. Exactly. It, uh, it will increase your chances. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I see a lot of questions. Uh, most of them we already answered, uh, unfortunately. Uh, or uh, unfortunately, I would say we already covered it, but uh, not going to cover it again. Uh, yeah, also, obviously. if you missed yes. the beginning of the stream, uh, later on YouTube, you can also, or if you're watching on YouTube now, you can scroll back directly. Or yep. later on, you can also watch it on demand on YouTube, for example. Exactly. Um, all right, so the next part we want to go into is some, um, some clarification about uh, sensors and also some uh, demonstrations about the differences uh, because I think you know talking about sensors uh, you guys probably all know uh, the, the DPI values uh, so uh, up to in this case up to 16,000 uh, which sounds really impressive of course but what does that actually mean uh, but also things like uh, the, the IPS uh, inches per second uh, the acceleration so We've thrown some numbers your way, and especially the uh, the mouse sensors. Again, some people were asking, what, what sensitivity do you guys play on? Uh, most people, when they think about DPI or CPI, uh, they, they get the idea that this is uh, the thing that uh, is either accuracy or speed. And, and both have some truth to them, and, and, uh, but it's not really the whole story. And of course, you know, we try to simplify it. Uh, but if you if you want to know like the exact detail or more information about it, uh, the sensitivity what it really does is uh, it, it's basically like um, uh, how precisely will the mouse measure? Uh, so basically, how many times will it measure per per inch? Yeah, per inch that you that you, of surface basically that you move over. So as you can imagine, the higher the the value. Theoretically, at least, uh, and, and uh, no, actually, maybe not theoretically, but the more precise it, it measures. Uh, now, whether you experience that as being a good thing or a bad thing, that's relative. Uh, because what most people will know, or will the association they will have with uh, uh, TPI settings, because if you just switch through them, what happens is, and maybe we can show this uh, on, on, on this PC, uh, I've got some settings open. Uh, oh, you guys cannot see my mouse sensor or my mouse cursor, or can you? No. Mm, no. Nope. Mm, that's weird. Maybe you can switch it on in the screen capture. Yes. There ah, we go. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, here's my mouse moving. Uh, I will just open Dragon Center, where you can change things like this. Um, and here you can say, see the the DPI setting uh, is at the moment uh, it's it's 800. Caesar is asking, does resolution have effect on mouse DPI? The, the DPI basically is the resolution of the mouse. Yeah, but I think you're you're talking about like monitor resolution. So whether uh, oh, uh, DPI oh, yeah, settings. I, I never had a 4K. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, and w when you have a higher resolution monitor, then um, you have it more can distance to make, travel. Yeah. More pixels to to traverse. So if you, for example, use a very low resolution on your mouse. Yes. Um, for every count, it might skip several pixels on your monitor if you use a very high resolution monitor. Yes. Um, so yeah, it is somewhat related. But again, this is also very subjective, but you will very soon find out what is best for you if you switch through your profiles on different monitors, I guess. Um, to answer the question about the, the uh, how low you can go, in the software <laughs> you can actually can you go, go down to 100 <laughs> DPI. To 100, yeah. Yes, that is the minimum, and the maximum, as you can see, is 16,000. Uh, now, once you've uh, found the one that you like, you just click, click apply and that's it. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, uh, one of the presets. So uh, the, the mouse by definition, or sorry, by standard, has uh, five presets. Level one, the lowest setting is 400. Level two is 800. Three is 1600. And then it basically, it's exponential by this point. So 3200. And uh, the, the last setting is 6400. Now 6400, is not even halfway, maybe like a third of the way up to 16,000, right? So you, you might think, wait a minute, why is this the final setting? Because it can go all the way up here. Um, I will show you guys by basically, because what I d did there, the presets, is just basically clicking this button. And as you can see, when I click this button on the in the software, it, it changes and it will go through the profile. So I will show you guys, this is uh, 400. 
So I'm just, and I'm going to do the same movement basically, just moving my wrist while keeping my, uh, or sorry, moving my, my hand while keeping my wrist in place, right? Just, just making a circle. This is 400 uh, DPI. Now I'm going to switch to 800. So it's already a little bit of a bigger circle. Now I'm at 1600. Now as you can see, it's already covering a much larger area with the same movement. Switching to 3200 now. Now I can, I can already reach the edges of the screen with the same movement. 6400. I mean, now I just only have to move just a very little bit. And if I'm, I'm just, you know, stuck at the edges now of the screen constantly if I'm making this movement. So, and that's what most people I think will, will know about DPI and, and the idea, the association that they have with DPI settings. That it's about speed and how fast your mouse cursor uh, uh, moves across the screen or basically how fast you can look around in games, right? Um, and, and that is, uh, of course, what you what you notice because the sensitivity when you move it up to a higher value, what that does is it makes the uh, the mouse more more accurate because of the the more detailed image and the more counts per inch. So DPI and CPI, to be clear, are basically the same thing, or people may mean the same thing by it. Uh, but DPI stands for dots per inch, which. I guess is is also more like a dot, you know, like a almost like a digital resolu resolution, right? Uh, pixels per inch is, Technically, is what's DPI being used on is, monitors. Technically, DPI is correct, for example, for monitors, and yes. CPI is technically correct yes. for a mouse, but you you often see DPI being used for exactly, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, DPI well. is, is is the most used term. It's the most common one. Yes, and yeah. CPI is the most technically correct one. Exactly, uh, because the more counts per inch, it basically just means that, you know, as you move the mouse, your sensor reads more points of reference, and each point of reference represents also a movement on the screen. So the more points it checks, so the higher your, your CPI or your DPI setting, that means it, it is checking more points in the same physical distance that your mouse travels, um, at which translates to more movement on the screen. That's as simple as I can put it. Um, now, like I said, 800 is, is for me mostly already enough, right? But for, for some people, uh, for example, I, know, I happen to know Eric, he really loves a high uh, setting, a high Eric DPI setting. Eric would put this at 16,000. Uh, I'm not sure if 16,000, <laughs> because let me just show you guys what happens if I put it to 16,000. Uh, I just select it and click apply and then like it literally i i only have to yeah this is this is an eric setting very <laughs> as you can see right this is a very uh slight movement I'm, I'm i'm this is like almost just a twitch so basically if you're you're breathing yeah. then you, yes. you, it will already push your mouse to the, to and, the and i'm going to show you later screen. on in game as well that if you put it at this high a value uh, that it, in theory you are very very accurate but it makes things really difficult if you change nothing else if you just leave it like this to be accurate uh, because you know your slightest movement will will friggin rotate you a quarter of the way like 90 degrees or stuff like that so that's that's going to be difficult to control as you can imagine at least in fps shooters if you're talking purely fps shooters um, so yeah um, let's see if it sticks this setting yeah so uh, as you can see also if i if i change uh, so i've now selected level five and i've, I've made it uh, i've changed it from 6400 to uh, 16,000. once i change that and, and click apply it will save that so that's also how you can customize if you, if you don't like the steps that are included uh the, the standard dpi settings defaults you can change all of them you can customize them to values that you uh, prefer um as are some other things i mean you see some things here like polling rate you can change uh, all the way down to 125 hertz don't know why you'd want to do that i also tested it by the way didn't notice that much difference but maybe if i really start uh, to focus on it response I, time I could... 125 hertz will be eight milliseconds for yeah. 250 it's going to be four for yeah. 500 it's going to be two and for 1000 hertz it's one, one millisecond exactly. of response yeah. time uh, so again 1000 is is basically the best one also by default is what it what it does um Lift off distance. I'm going to show you in a minute what that is. But basically, uh, you know, if you if you're like Mike and you have a very low sensitivity and you're, you keep lifting your mouse up to to move, you don't want that the mouse keeps tracking if you uh, lift it up. You don't want the mouse to track that movement. You only want it to track once you put it back down. Continue where you were, and then start moving again. Um, so 
yeah, we put it to low because again, we, we don't want to uh, track in the air. Angle snapping, I'm also going to show you some examples of that. Yeah, and, Caesar uh, was already asking in chat, what is angle snapping? Later on, we will demonstrate yes. you uh, with a very easy test that you can also do at home. Yes. Uh, to see if your mouse has yep. angle snapping or not. Exactly. Uh, and in our case, you can either enable or disable it. Uh, again, it, it's down to, uh, it, by default, it's disabled because uh, for, for most FPS gamers, this is a no-no. This is a bad thing. Um, because again, we're going for, for maximum accuracy. And what FPS gamers tend to do is they have like this muscle memory that they know, all right, for a certain movement, physical movement, translates to a certain... Um, distance traveled on the screen so they know basically to make certain shots or flick shots they know exactly i i have to make this physical movement with my hand and the result will be the same 100 percent of the time will be the same every time that's basically how they train um, and how they get good uh, you can also customize buttons by the way but i'm not going to go into that too much uh, today uh, because it's already quite a technical story um, anyway um, so DPI, CPI, uh, IPS, uh, basically, I mean, polling rate is, is like the, the rate at which the mouse and the, the PC basically check the, the, the position. So this is uh, 1,000 times per second, 1,000 hertz, um, that it, it updates basically the position to your PC, depending on if you're moving or not, obviously, but um, uh, or actually it doesn't depend on that because it, it's constantly doing that. Uh, but the higher number, of course, the, the better or the more accurate uh, and the, the least amount of latency. With IPS uh, or uh, inches per second, that translates to uh, how many inches per second you can move without the mouse uh, losing track so, so that it can still track accurately uh, the, yeah, the distance and the movements that you make. Uh, now, if we say 400 inches per second, how much, uh, what does that translate to in, uh, I don't know, kilometers an hour or something like that? Something ridiculous, probably. Something <laughs> that you, you are unlikely to reach. Let me right? check. Maybe I can Google that. Mike's, Mike's doing the math. Uh. <laughs> okay, Google. <laughs> two two has kilometers an hour, not just two see. kilometers, I think. Yes. Oh, wait. Person. Yeah. There we go. Um, that's over 36 and a half kilometers an hour. Right. So, uh, so that means that you can, th this mouse can still do its job basically, um, and and the, the sensor will keep tracking if you move at more than uh, 30 kilometers an hour, uh, which is yeah, you're, you're unlikely to do that for any sustained um, amount of time because obviously you'd run out of mouse pad or surface. And your, your arm also needs time to accelerate. Yes, yeah, so you're very unlikely to reach that. Um, Basically, you're not going to spin out the sensor. No, no, because spinning out is one of the things that we're gonna show you. Um, actually, maybe we, we can dive into that right now, um, which is a very easy, a quick and easy test that you can also do. Well, there's two actually, so there's one which we are called uh, the, the paint test. Uh, basically what you do is you make uh, a paint, you open a paint file, uh, you put the mouse on a very low sensitivity. So actually I will um, see if I can wait. Yeah, so I've put it on a very low sensitivity. Right, you can see I, I have to make quite big movements to, to, I'm not sure if you guys can even see it. This is a very small mouse cursor, but you, you see it moving left to right, right? Um, and what you do then is you just press down one mouse button, the, the, the left mouse button. So basically you start drawing, right? Uh, and what you do is you try to move from side <laughs> to side. I see Bob as, Ross in the Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah, as fast, as fast as possible. So basically like this. And what you should end up with is stripes like that, you know, like this. You just should see stripes running from left to right. Um, that's, that's basically what you're looking for. Because that basically indicates, and I can switch up the DPI one uh, one level, but you still see, you know, I can I can just move it around uh, quite fast actually. There you go. And the mouse is still tracking yes. what Peter is doing. Yes, it's it's very yeah it, it's very accurate. So that means it it's still it, you know whatever my my movement is, and no matter how violently I, I do this and how fast and how I, uncontrolled I do it, uh, which again in games you're not likely to do that but still it's like testing the limits I, of your I sensor. I almost do that in game. <laughs> really? You, you, you do like this? Like if, <laughs> if I'm in Quake and 
than, uh, for example, rocket jumping around, then it can be yeah. really fast. Anyway, okay, so uh, we, we've done that. Now I'm going to take the office mouse, so the, the, the Logitech one we showed you earlier, this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. And this thing should be, oh, it's actually not that low a sensitivity, um, but it's, it's fine for, for purposes of this uh, demonstration. I'm going to do the same thing, right? So this is what happens. And again, I'm, 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 I'm it's just moving. Left, I'm moving right, it. Left, right. I'm moving it side to side, right? So what's happening here? Because it, the, I mean, the, the pattern is not going side to side, right? Again, and, and this mouse is connected to the same PC, so I can take this one now. I'll take a different color, um, uh, like this, or a blue, bluish. Here we go. Um, here we go. So this mouse handles it just fine. And again, I'll take this mouse. I can't even see the cursor. Here we go. And I'll, I'll. Uh, just delete these ones for a second. <laughs> Kuhn is saying the hate on Logitech. Now, this is not representative no. for their gaming no, 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 mice, no, no, just exactly. to, to make that sure. Yes. This is really the com comparison of a, a simple yeah. optical sensor in an office mouse yes. uh, compared to a good sensor in a gaming mouse. Yeah. Again, this, this, we actually we were looking for uh, like a really old product We were just looking MSI. for an office mouse and this one was laying around yeah, exactly. in This was the first one that we found that, yeah. that would spin out and, or spin out, that would have this effect, which is, was perfect for, for our purposes of showing you guys, um, you know, the difference between a sensor that really isn't meant for, for, for gaming and, and fast tracking and keeping up with fast movements, uh, but it's fine for general office use as long as you don't, you know, spaz out. Um, so that's one test. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, we can we can show you what the effect is then in game. Um, so I'll quickly, damn that low sensitivity, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can quickly start up a game. Uh, Valorant, for example, if it will start. Hello. I could I could boot up uh, alternatively CS:GO. If this doesn't work, sometimes Riot games, the, the thing can be a bit slow. Oh, here it goes. So again, I've got the, both mice uh, connected here and I will uh, show you first again the uh, GM41 lightweight. So this is more of a practical situation than yeah. paint, of course, because yes. games are where you will usually make fast movements with your mouse. Yes, exactly. Uh, play, and I will just. So how go. does it pan out in a game? Yeah, if I'll, you try I'll just go into into a shooting range, into a practice session, because I don't want to bother anybody. Because I'm, again, I'm not going to be playing seriously. I'm just going to try and demonstrate the same effect of what happens. Uh, and instead of you know moving up and down fast, because you, again, you don't really do that in games. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a quick swipe. So basically, uh, left to right, for example. So basically, if like there's if there's shot. somebody behind me, no. and I quickly want to. You know, make a make a, 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 a 180 or, or a 360. It's a flick shot, basically. Sensitivity is a bit doing. high. Let me just take take this to the lowest level. Wow, that's really high. Woo, that's even higher. Here we go. So this is low sensitivity, right? So I can comfortably just uh, yeah move the mouse without uh, having to worry about accuracy. Quite accurate. That's fine. Um, and so I can just move around like like this, and very quickly, uh, if there's somebody behind me, just and I'm looking behind me, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, office mouse. So here we go. And as you can see, it, it, if, I'm, if I'm not doing it that fast, like this it can handle just fine. But there's going to be a point where it's just going to basically stop registering and, and either look up or down. So as you can see, if I'm really just, you know, quickly doing this, it's not going to keep accurate track of where I'm pointing. It's just going to yeah, g point up, down, be very erratic in its, in its behavior, basically, and unpredictable of where it's going to end up. Or if I'm moving it fast enough, it's just going to basically stay in one position. Can you do the paint test basically in Valorant, so moving it left, right, left, right? Yeah. Well, it's very difficult to see, but it's, it's not really turning around, it's kind of like it's staying yeah. in the same spot. And especially if I'm doing it like this, it's basically just going to look down or up, which is why it's called spinning out. It's just going to not really register where I'm looking. And if I'm going to do that same thing with this sensor, 
you know, I can, I can basically spin it around as fast as I want. And at some point it's going to look down a little bit. Uh, but for a large part, it is going to be much more accurate in tracking the movements. And I can pretty much spin it or, or uh, move it as fast as I want. And it's not going to lose track. So that's something you can test by yourself. Or if you've experienced this for yourself, by the way, if you really flick really fast, and instead of you know, being aiming dead on where you were expecting to be aiming, suddenly you were looking at, at the floor or the, 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 the ceiling, yeah, that, that's, that could be a sign that your mouse sensor is not really up to, to that kind of speed um, and, and that kind of work. So and that's that's one uh, example. The lower your sensitivity, the bigger this issue will be, because the faster you will yeah. need to move your mouse to quickly turn around. Yes. Yeah. So you're you're more likely to encounter this issue if you use a low sensitivity. And I mean, sensitivity. You know, we're talking about DPI, of course. So the DPI settings is one way of doing um, sensitivity. Uh, another one is uh, blah, 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 where is it? Uh, mouse, I think. Yeah, there was in the previous one. Uh, okay. Where? Controls? No. Uh, oh, that one. No, general, general. thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, sensitivity, aim. Here you go. So you can also, even if you select a very high, like even up to 16,000 DPI on your mouse, uh, you can still select uh, or change the sensitivity in uh, the game. So, for example, uh, it's very hard to you show. You can the... use a very high resolution on your mouse, but yes. still a very low sensitivity in the game. Well, what I wanted to say is I want to kind of show the difference. So if I use uh, the GM41 again, I can uh, switch to a very high DPI setting. Let's see which one is, uh, feels very high. So this one is, I think, the, the 6400 uh, I've got here. So I only have to move a little bit, and the mouse is just zooming across the screen. Uh, but when I pull this down, I'm not actually sure if it makes that big of a difference in this game, but um, we'll see what happens. Yes. So as you can see now, I really have to move quite a bit to be able to, uh, yeah, to, to move any kind of distance. So I, I need to use almost the whole table to do a, a 180. And this is at high DPI setting. Uh, so you can use high DPI settings in games to be accurate. Uh, and, and to still be able to aim very accurately, not, not to have like uh, very difficult to DCNL control. DCNL is very sharp, by the way. So our, the name of the uh, stream title is wrong in our in our uh, name tag. It says lightweight instead of lightweight. Oh, really? <laughs> Fair point. Uh oh. Hmm. That's a uh, that's a mistake there. And on the on the, uh, the the Logitech mouse again, this is this is really ridiculous because it, it it can't keep up anyway. It, this thing cannot really switch DPI anyway. This has a fixed DPI, obviously. Um, but yeah, so this one really. I uh, can't keep up uh, with this low setting and it basically it will just stand still most of the time if I move fast. Uh, let me switch this back to one because that's like one on one setting. Uh, and as you can see now it's just whew, all over the place. So this is high setting. Uh, what are you doing, Mike? You, I'm you're trying a to you you trying to include a T? Yeah. Oh, don't. That's what I'm trying to do, but it's quite difficult. Stop. But there's a tea. <laughs> Stop messing with this. <laughs> I'm just fixing the title. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's that's uh, a very easy test and, and uh, one thing that you can check out with your uh, sensor and, and uh, what's called spinning out. Uh, another thing uh, that somebody <laughs> asked there was... There we go. <laughs> now it's almost <laughs> correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> um, another thing that some of you guys were asking about was angle snapping. Now, what angle snapping is, uh, is and how you can test it, is I will just start drawing uh, a uh, progressively bigger circle, basically, with uh, this, in this case, this is the GM41. Uh, so I will start off here, for example, and do this. And what should happen is you should try to keep it round. Right, that's that's the goal. Can you do it again? Uh, let me show. Can you show your hand while you do that? Uh, yeah, this camera isn't really pointing down. Let's see if we can point it down a bit. Yes. Okay, so I'll do it again. So basically, just making some circles. Yes. There you go. And that's what it looks that's, like in paint. Yes. Um, okay. 
Now I'm going to do the same, uh, I'll select a different color, with uh, the Logitech mouse. And let's see what will happen. So I'm trying to keep it round. I'm just making the same round movement. But as you can see, what happens is it's much more squared. That is what is what, what angle, angle snapping yeah. is. It's, it's trying to um, make things more, uh, more angled or more, more yeah, rectangular. Um, now, the purpose of this, honestly, I don't know. I guess this is useful for... It's, it's easier to make straight lines with this. Yeah, so it's, it's for, for, for general office usage, for example, where you might be able, you know, you might want to draw a straight line or stuff like that. It's probably going to try and predict like, ah, you're trying to draw a straight line, so I'll, I'll, I'll help you out with that. It's like an algorithm that's trying to help out with, with that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of accuracy, obviously, that isn't helping because it's not really translating my movements onto the monitor exactly as I as I want to. Um, and again, with the, with a gaming mouse, what you want is accuracy. You don't want a predictive algorithm that's trying to interpret what you're trying to do because you are actually doing what you're trying to do with your hand, and you want that to be translated onto the screen as accurately as possible. So. This is also, again, this is a test I think anybody can do, right? Um, and yeah, so this is angle snap. Actually, let me, let me try some because I saw in Dragon Center that I could turn this on. And let's see what happens um, on the GM41 if I turn this on. So again, let me do the same test uh, with the GM41 with angle snapping on. Here we go. Well, it's not, it's not quite as bad. It's not as aggressive, but yeah. you can already see yes. a little bit that it's drawing straight lines. Yes, like for example, points. here at the top, this is, this yeah. is quite flat, right? You can see that. But the, still the angle snapping, even when you switch it off, is n not as aggressive as it is on, the, on yeah. the office mouse. Yeah, yeah. So again, and for office mice, this is, this is great because again, you're, you're very often you're trying to draw straight lines or, you know, um, th it's more like, a, um, yeah, for office work and for general pro product uh, productivity work, uh, this is fine, and and you're more likely to to have a need to draw straight lines. Um, but for gaming, that's definitely not something you want. And then I can turn it off again, of course. Thank God. Um, also, yeah. if you want to make headshots, for example, and you turn around and you're not on the correct height yet, yeah, um, then it's harder to adjust to the correct height to make a headshot when you're using. Uh, angle snapping on yeah. because it's called snapping because it will um, basically it, it, it will make a corner. Yeah, but well that, but also if so if if you are trying to correct for height, that means that it will try to stick to the same angle. That's what yeah. you're seeing basically. It chooses with this. a direction, so it snaps yes. to another direction. Exactly. So it's trying to snap to to a, either a a, a vertical, uh, vertical or, horizontal. or a horizontal line, and that that's what it will try to stick to for for as long as it thinks that you are trying to head in that direction. Uh, so again, in a game, that means it's very difficult to get like very fine height differences or uh, yeah, very small differences to hit something. Physics class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's physics, but at least it's fun with uh, with mice, you know, fun with mouse sensors. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps to to at least make clear what angle snapping is and why uh, it's generally considered to be a bad thing for gaming mice. Um, also, something we want to cover is that uh, acceleration. Now, in Windows, which this is just a standard Windows 10 installation, you have uh, uh, the, the mouse uh, properties. Usually, if you, if you want to get there, what you will do is you will, uh, for example, search and then go for mouse settings. You will get something like this in Windows 10. Um, and then it's, it's actually... On the right, you will have it at additional mouse options. Yeah, here, yeah. additional mouse options. I'm an old school guy. Uh, I prefer to go for the control panel and then go to mouse and then you basically it's the same thing because you get this this little menu um, now one of the one of the things that windows does that pisses me off is it will automatically enable pointer trails which always gives me the impression that i'm using a monitor with a low refresh rate 30 because hertz. <laughs> yeah because there's like a you know like it's like ghosting your your, your mouse 
pointer is leaving a trail. And this this used to be really fun when you when you did like this, you know, you, in the past uh, when I was really young, and this this wasn't like a new thing. We would enable this and like, oh look, my, I can make a trail with my mouse, and it it it, sh it, it's it like sheds playing snake on your yeah, kind of, you know. <laughs> so it, it was like an effect that was enjoyable. Now it pisses me off, and I always enable or disable it as fast as possible. Um, but the thing I really want to draw your attention to is the, the top option. So there's a couple of things here. Under pointer options, this is where you'll find it. There is uh, pointer speed, which is basically uh, a... I, it's, I don't think it's, this, is the, it, this changes the DPI setting, but it has a similar effect. But let me check to be sure. It's a, it's a software sensitivity setting. Yeah, so this doesn't actually change the DPI. So the DPI in the mouse, the hardware level yep. DPI stays the same. But I would always suggest to keep that in the middle and adjust yes. your sensitivity in your game. Yes, uh, indeed, because the game is much more nuanced and also suitable for the game, while Windows is, again, for a very broad range of uh, uh, things. So it doesn't really take into account accuracy for your game, and also not if necessarily. You if you reinstall your PC, it's very easy that you can easily take the same value from your previous installation. Yes, because so you usually... No, I use it at 800 DPI, I yeah. use it at sensitivity 1.5 yeah. in the game, yes. and then you got exactly the same sensitivity. Yeah. Because value. Windows, when, when you install it, it will always be in the middle by yeah. default. That's uh, Just keep it there. Yeah, and I'm not sure if this, uh, because this is uh, what is known as um, it's called enhanced point precision, uh, but most people will also know it as acceler mouse acceleration. Um, and this is, I think for, for gaming at least, this is one of the worst kinds. This is great for touchpads. Yeah, it on is. On a notebook. It is, yeah. When you've got very limited space, this is awesome, right? And, and a very big screen, for example. Yeah. Like um, switching this off on a notebook and using the touchpad is horrible. Yes. It's it's really hard to, I to will, use I will that. also demonstrate this. So what happens is, uh, now I've disabled it, right? And I'm going to get two little help things here. I put it on the table. Because what I'm doing here, essentially, is I'm creating a uh, certain physical space between these two objects, right? And that, that space is what I will be traveling, uh, basically. And I will put this uh, on the lowest sensitivity. Where's track and center? Here we go. Or uh, yeah, I, I want, basically want to put it on uh, 400. That's fine for now. Um, it's maybe actually still a little bit too fast. Um, let me change it. Yeah, or you can just put it to 100 in the software as well. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if that's maybe too slow, but let's give it a go. Uh, yeah, I think this will be OK for this purpose. It's going to be hell trying to navigate certain things now, but OK. Uh, you guys can see my what the Maybe hell? it's easiest to do this in paint as well. You can draw a line and compare the lines. Yeah, but you guys cannot like, see paint my... Paint uh, is a tool that cannot be beaten uh, for yeah, mouse Paint testing. is such a versatile <laughs> tool, yeah. Uh, capture mouse or cursor. Let's see if you guys can... Oh, can you guys see the cursor again? Yep. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mouse between these two um, objects. So, a set distance. And uh, I, while I press the button, so uh, here you can see this is... Here we go. And I'm trying to do like a, a regular slow speed, constant speed. Um, so, it travels that far, right? Um, and, and now I've got, it's disabled, so it shouldn't really matter if I do it faster. Uh, well, I didn't really go the full distance, but let's do this again. <laughs> don't uh, smack I need the to, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't want to smack the other thing out of place. So it's, uh, but it really doesn't matter how fast I do it. It should always so give... So the speed does not influence no, the distance. Exactly. So this should also, again... Oh, damn, if I push the other mouse... So when I hit it, it, it <laughs> presses the right mouse button, and then it deletes what I drew. But anyway... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, you, you get you get the idea, right? So it's the same. It's it's consistent. It's it's predictable. Um, the 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 physical uh, distance you travel with the mouse always gives the same amount of distance traveled on the screen. That's it, basically. So when you're that means that when you're aiming, that means that your muscle memory will always be right and predictable. So if you move your your uh, uh, mouse at a set distance, you will always achieve the same result. Um, so that's where muscle memory really helps out, and this is what all the pros do and want, uh, because that means that once you've got it into your system, it becomes second nature, so you know exactly, oh, I see a guy there, and you basically just flick and click, literally, and headshot. And you just know it's going to hit because you know exactly the movement you need to make for that distance. F-Metal 2 was saying on Twitch, physics class, art class, this show has everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
We need to get some Bob Ross Geometry uh, as well. <laughs> things here. Uh, now, what I want to show you guys is that uh, if I now enable pointer precision or acceleration, and I have to move the mouse quite a bit. Here we go. Um, and now I'm going to, um, again, draw the lines. I'm going to start off by doing it slow. So this is a slow, constant speed. And as you can see, I only get half, half the distance. So Why still same mouse resolution, yeah, same, same sensitivity. I, I haven't changed windows. anything. The only thing I changed was uh, the accelerate, mouse acceleration or, or enhanced point of precision uh, option in Windows. Now, what happens if I do it a bit faster? I'll try to do it a bit faster even <laughs> than that. So, as you can see, when I do it faster, it will travel a bit further. Don't smack it. Yeah. That's not, that's not too bad, actually. I was expecting it to be a bit more, but... But try to do it really slow. You will see the difference. It, yeah. It's Let's do it really slow first. So, again. Slow, constant speed. Here we go. All right. And now faster. It's not as bad as I thought, actually. Maybe that's also because the DPI setting is very is at the lowest but setting. It's also not it's not really fast because you're holding back because of the. I side. am, yeah, because I don't want to move that anyway. Okay. This is actually yeah, this is pretty fast. I mean. Okay, re remove the things and try it again. No, no, here we go. <laughs> this is already you know. So yeah, you can see it goes further. Now. Exactly. Okay, now I'm going to remove the things and and try and do the same thing, but. Yeah. The point is, the acceleration, what it does is when it notices that you are moving faster, you're moving the mouse faster across the same amount of distance, mm -hmm. it will try to interpret that as, oh, you're trying to get further away or, you know, move Basically, the mouse further yeah. away. So I will help you with that. So I will accelerate the movement uh, to, to help you get to where you need to be. Um, that's pretty much what that does. Um, and the problem with it is that it makes it uh, inconsistent where you are going to end up. Uh, so w once you stop after the distance, depending on your speed uh, that you use to, to get there, you might travel twice the distance in some extreme examples. So you, instead of doing you a 180... If you move really fast and really slow, then the, the difference becomes significant. In yes. Uh, so basically what that means is that your, your distance traveled becomes very different. And, and again, it, it, what that means is it becomes very hard to predict. Uh, and that's really a big no-no when it comes to trying to be accurate and knowing, all right, if I if I just you know flick like this, it's I'm going to hit this guy uh, because again, that if you are a competitive player and and you play the game so many times and, and so much so many hours that you know exactly how things go, you will know the exact movement that is needed in a certain uh, situation, and that gives you confidence as well because you just know that you are going to hit that shot nine out of ten times, you're going to hit it because you know you know, the exact movement that you need, uh, and, and there you go. With uh, acceleration on, or at least the Windows acceleration, that's going to be very difficult to predict, so you're probably going to miss a lot of shots. To be fair, I've also seen a couple of videos where there are, uh, there's apparently software where you can make a custom acceleration script. You can also use it in certain games. Yes, exactly. Um, which allows you to make a uh, acceleration script basically or a curve. a curve yeah because it is like a curve indeed uh, that that makes it more uh, linear or well any way you want to make it but by that uh, by doing that you make it more predictable so then you could potentially make it uh, yeah usable and, and helpful because again the goal is to make it predictable but it is something that if if you want to use that you really have to get used to it yes and it's for most people it will be more difficult yeah um, but it can it can give you benefits and hmm. I know in, in for example arena shooters like in, in the quake scene in yep. the dual scene so one versus one um, you don't always know where your opponent will come from so it's a lot of looking around yep. um, if you have acceleration um, enabled you can look around faster but still if you, for example, use a real gun and you want to accurately shoot your opponent, yep. you can move it slower for more accuracy. So I know in, in some games, um, it's a thing to use acceleration, yep. um, but for most people, it will be hard. Especially if you're not used to it, using acceleration uh, throws most people off in a game. 
Yeah, it's, it's almost like you have to learn to aim all over again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, and you, you can try this at home. Uh, to, if you've never even been aware of this, uh, maybe it's best to leave it on because that means if you are, if you've learned to play with it, that's what you're used to. But you can play with it. So if you have it enabled, uh, you can try and disable it, and and that will probably throw your aim off a bit as well at the beginning if you're used to having it. Um, but yeah, once you get used to it, it does mean that it it will be much more. Um, constant your, your, your movement and 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 the effect that it has uh, with regards to accuracy and and how accurate you can be once you get used to it will be much better so that's what what most of the people will uh, will use in professional settings or in competitive Tony settings. Tony Valuke saying uh, this acceleration is not for gamers like shooting games but maybe useful for office employees yes well exactly um, so, so that's what we were saying and, and also why Mike yeah, like said the, the Windows one yes but there are gamers that use acceleration yes. I don't think for example in CSGO I don't think it it's really a thing Not because really, most no. of the time you know approximately from what direction your opponent will be coming yes but i know in in arena shooters uh, some it's people difficult. use it you don't have sound cues or yeah. you, you do have them but it, they are much less useful because it's way too fast paced and uh, i personally don't use it i cannot play with acceleration no. um but uh for example if you have a gaming notebook and yeah. you also use your touchpad sometimes yeah. then you probably want to toggle it yes so if you use your um, touchpad you probably want to have it on because it's way easier to use with acceleration yeah. and if you're going to game you want to switch it with the mouse because of the limited actually. space obviously you know, a trackpad uh, is really small a touchpad or trackpad so that's where if you if you use uh, and if you move your finger faster across the screen you probably are uh, trying to get somewhere to like one of the edges of the screen or a different screen for example screen if really you want fast. to close a window and you yeah. want to go to the top right corner yeah. Um, you probably only need one movement, one, like exactly. one fast movement, and you will be in the corner. Instead and otherwise, of, you have to instead of swiping it, multiple yeah. times, indeed. So, <laughs> yeah, there it can really help, and it's something that's really good. Uh, Dragon Center has more functions. Love it. Yeah, I mean, again, Dragon Center, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice software. And again, depending on the product, obviously, not all products have the same functions. Uh, but here, yeah, there are it a lot also, of things. It also, of course, depends on the capabilities of the mouse sensor, yes. like. For example, whether or not you can um, change the lift-off distance or yep. Um, yep. disable and enable angle snapping. Yep. Depends on the product. Exactly. Um, and for the lift-off distance, shall we, uh, shall we test that? Do yeah, we sure. dare? Let's see. So I've got some DVDs here. Um, These you know, are the, old those, those things, MSI oh, notebook I, recovery discs. Yeah, I, I changed the uh, the camera to a different place. Here we go. We found so some indeed. in the basement. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember these? Yes. You used to put these in these, these cup holders. You had them in your PC? Yes. Yeah, you had this really great program which would give you a free cup holder if you click the button and it would just open <laughs> the CD tray or the DVD tray. Uh, but yeah, so we've got two regular ones of these. We'll just put them down here. Uh, and what I'll do is I will put the mouse uh, on these on this surface, so it, it will raise them just a bit from the surface uh, area from the mouse pad. And I will try to make sure that the mouse sensor is right in between the two DVDs. So basically, it it lifts up. That's what it's lift off distance test. It lifts off the surface. So um, it's slightly then, elevated from from the surface you're exactly. trying to yes uh, yeah to track. So uh, I'll just put them a little bit further apart. Here we go. Yeah, and then we'll uh, yeah, we need to look at the screen. Uh, um, yeah, maybe I can do it a bit easier like this. Yeah, you guys can see the cursor. Um, and as you can see, it, it is still tracking a little bit. And this is the GM41 lightweight. Um, it is st still tracking a little bit, but it's already starting to struggle a bit. And if I put another DVD's worth of uh, distance there so now i've got two stacked on top of each other and i'm moving the mouse but cursor is standing still uh, right uh, on that side so if i take it off there you go and so that's that's lift of this so on a certain uh, uh yeah elevation uh, and then preferably as soon as possible basically once you lift the mouse you want the sensor to stop tracking movement because that means that once you put it back down it's going to continue where you left off instead of tracking uh, you know 
anything that you did while uh, moving the mouse to the, to the other end of the mouse pad. There is an exception though, and that's also why you have the toggle in Dragon Center. Yep. Uh, some people prefer to use custom mouse gates and they put them yep. on top of the other mouse gates. And they are a different, yeah, so th that raises the mouse yeah, as well. Yeah, it elevates the mouse, yep. but uh, if you have a very low lift of distance from your sensor, it will um, basically prevent your mouse from tracking the surface. Um, so then in the software you can adjust the uh, lift of distance setting. Yep. So even if you, for example, use custom uh, mouse feed, it will still be able to track the surface. Yeah. Um, and for this, so I've got also got the office mouse here, and obviously uh, this, this one also keeps tracking just fine. Um, this one has a much higher lift of distance by default. Well, you say that, but if I, just, if I also raise this one to two DVDs uh, worth of uh, tracking distance. Uh, I think right, the steps right. are also too big, because if you slightly yeah. elevate it, and you can basically float it above the surface, you yeah. can also kind of feel where the point is where it starts tracking. Yeah, this one is not that bad, I have to say. It's, it's a little bit yeah, elevated It depends still. per mouse. It yeah. depends very much per exactly. mouse. Exactly. So, so this sensor is not that bad in terms of uh, elevation. I mean, it's probably yeah, it's just a little bit over one DVD's worth, <laughs> if that's a measurement that you can take. Um, and for, for this mouse, it, it, it also, uh, it, well, it, it's very little. So once you start lifting it up, Yeah, it, mine is it, relatively high. I've got like a yeah. a basic, very old MSI gaming mouse here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. You're testing it as well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I just lift it slightly, but yeah. it, it keeps on tracking even yeah. if I lift it quite far. Yeah. So that one, for example, two DVDs, it would probably still keep tracking yeah. uh, two DVDs height even. Yeah. So so that's lift off distance basically. So again, this is just to show you guys uh, the the example. And so one of the things that if you are unhappy with a, you bought a new mouse and, and you think, look, I'm, uh, this this thing is supposed to be better, but I'm not. It doesn't feel accurate or, or it feels very weird that it's. Uh, I have to put it on a low. Uh, sensitivity and able to uh, in order to get the, the best out of it uh, now hopefully this gives you some information about for example you can put it on a high sensitivity uh, but then in a game or sorry yeah high dpi value but then in the game you can ch you can lower that um, so for example again if we uh, hmm, if we change this to uh, the, the highest setting um, and by the way, doing it the reverse order is not really recommended. So for example, if you choose 100 DPI in, on the hardware level, and then you, you uh, up the sensitivity in the game all the way, maybe we can actually show that. But I, I think that should result in fairly inaccurate movement, uh, if we can actually uh, <laughs> get this started, because this is going to take a bit. Because that should mean that actually the, the sensor of the mouse is using its lowest resolution. So that means that there should be bigger gaps in between the measurements uh, that it takes. Uh, and then if you, if you ramp the sensitivity in the game up all the way, that should theoretically, I guess, result in, in gaps, right? You should, you should maybe see some choppiness. But let me see if we can actually see that sensitivity aim. I'll just bump that all the way up. Let me quickly add a T here well, as well. It's not that bad, I have to say. But I'm just fixing the T quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah, uh, and in the, in the, the close up. Oh, uh, <laughs> actually, this there is. I go. think this is a oh. good test. So if you, here's here we go. You can see the mouse. If I move very slowly, it will skip a couple of pixels. You guys see that? So this is like really millimeter by millimeter movement. So here you can really see that the, the, the setting, the DPI setting, is, is low because it's basically skipping pixels and, and snapping to the next point of where it, it measures. Um, and that's, that's really affecting your accuracy. I mean, when you move fast, it's not that noticeable. But when, again, when you're, for example, in sniping mode in, in some games um, and, you, and you just have like tiny adjustments to try and get that headshot, this is going to make it way more difficult, right? Because this is just skipping all across, uh, all along the place. Um, and then if I up the uh, DPI again, let me just put this, uh, let's, let's go to 200 first and see, see how that influenced things. So again, I'm still getting some well, pretty, pretty bad, actually, pretty bad snapping here. Now let's go to 400. All right. Okay. 
So, again, I'm getting that snapping. Um, I think at this point it's more to do with uh, the acceleration in the game. Uh, the, the, the sensitivity aim in here. So if I lower that, again, that's also why you don't want to crank it up all the way, because it's just going to skip pixels. Um, but if I put it on, uh, I don't know, half, five. So very tiny adjustments. It's still doing skipping a little bit, but it's like, well, it, it's, it is literally like half of what it was. So also acceleration in games or sensitivity, you don't want to put it too high. Um, and if I now put it down to one, I mean, this is this is the movement I get if I just I, I, I don't know if you guys can even see it, but it's like really small. There's there's almost no jumping of pixels. So that's also why the, the sensitivity in game you don't want to raise that. Uh, instead, the better thing is to raise the sensitivity uh, on your mouse if you want to be more accurate. The resolution. Yeah. Yes, the resolution. So the DPI setting. So if you, for example, put that to uh, to sixty four hundred. It's flying all over the place. Here we go. Um, and this is really accurate, but it's hard to control. So then what you do is you go into the game and you put this to, I don't know, 0.2. I don't know how to, how to offset this the best way, but let's give it a try. Oh, this feels pretty natural. Yeah, feels pretty good. And I, as you can see, if I, if I change, uh, yeah, if I just move the mouse very slightly to adjust, like to get that perfect headshot, it doesn't snap. It, it doesn't try to snap like... It, it's not skipping pixels on no, your screen. No, exactly. So it, it's, it's very accurate indeed. It, it, it's, um, it's still measuring uh, all, the, all the pixels in between and all the, the distance traveled in between. So it's very accurate. And this, is, this makes a difference to a certain extent, of course. Like at a certain um, mouse resolution, um, it already feels smooth. Uh, you don't have to go to the maximum resolution to, to get the smooth movement. But if you use it at the very lowest mouse resolution, like 100 dpi, then you can get, for example, skipping. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not the best FPS player and or the best aim uh, guy, but I mean, this, this doesn't feel too hard to uh, get on, on target indeed. Feels pretty, pretty okay, pretty easy. Danny is asking, when will the prices drop from GPUs? That's extremely <laughs> hard to predict because it's dependent on so many factors. Um, for example, the, the situation around Corona, about yeah. component cost, about uh, demand. Yeah. Um, Supply and demand is the yeah. biggest thing there. And uh, I mean, I think it's no secret. Everybody knows that there's, there's just way more demand than there is uh, supply at the moment. And this is something that everybody in the industry is working to try and fix, but it's just, uh, yeah, the demand has never been higher at, uh, in, in the, the, with the start of a new generation. So it yeah, also depends is... what the, the cryptocurrency market is doing. Yeah. Um, because if they increase in value, there will be more uh, miners active and they tend to buy a lot of GPUs for that. Yeah. So it, it's, it's impossible to predict that uh, when they will drop. Yeah. See, when I, when I get into the menu, that's when you really notice that the sensitivity is actually really high. Uh, so it, it's harder to, to aim, but it's the sensitivity in game that you can then lower to compensate for that without sacrificing accuracy. Um, so for example, if you use 800 DPI on 0 0.5 in the game, it will be the same as 400 DPI on yes. 1. Yes, yeah, it, it, it's like it's, it's, it's scaling basic, it. basic mathematics. Yes. Um. How comfortable? Well, again, that, that's really a, a subjective. So John Andre is asking, how comfortable is it to point when you're aiming while moving fast? I mean, you got to aim fast, but how comfortable is it for that mouse? It's a very subjective uh, question because, again, for, for me personally, I really like that it's lightweight because that means that there's very little inertia and, and very little... Um, uh, and it's very smooth as in, you know, it glides very easily along the surface. So there's, there's really no resistance. So it's very easy for me to, to get into that uh, situation. But if you're used to um, heavier mice, you will probably tend to overshoot. 
uh, when you switch to, to a lightweight mouse like this. At least in the beginning, because you have to yeah. get used to the lower weight. Exactly, yeah. Because again, it's also what are you used to, what do you prefer even? If you prefer more heavy mice and, and you do better with them, uh, then that's fine, you know, that, then those are better for you. Um, so it's hard to say one is better or not. Uh, it, it depends per person. Uh, for me, and I guess for Mike as well, uh, a, a mouse like this just makes it very easy in a lightweight mouse. And I, this is, I think that's also why it's a trend for most um, FPS gamers. It seems to be the case that they prefer a lighter weight mouse because it just makes them uh, able to be more accurate and, and a bit faster uh, or at least gives the, gives them the feeling that they that they are they are that and probably that that is also the case you could of course test it with uh, how they perform with certain mice but yeah will it be good for csgo yeah for me definitely yeah, it's again it's, it's an fps this, game right? and a competitive yeah. one so it, yes uh, but but it depends uh, if you like very light mice uh, and, and very smooth mice, then it's probably going to be a very enjoyable experience. If you like heavier mice or uh, you know the, the the rougher surface where you actually you feel like you have more control, then this mouse might be a bit difficult to master for you because it, it glides really fast, really easily. So, yeah, like some people in the chat have already said, you might. Uh, have the tendency of overshooting your target instead of landing exactly on target. You, you, you're likely to glide past it. <laughs> David on YouTube, just for your information, we're currently running an AMD CPU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. This this system is actually using a uh, a Ryzen uh, seven, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I can actually. Yeah. I I could show this you. Is a <laughs> This is a uh, system we quickly put together, and we had a 2700X. So it's a, a little bit older model we had laying around. Yes. Um, but of course, for Valorant and stuff, it's it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just quickly gonna. Um, I quickly as needed proof. an AM4 CPU to to put in this motherboard because as, it was as proof. Here you go. Mode. CPU Z. Ryzen 7. So no, we we don't S only use Intel. X. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes we use Intel. Sometimes we use AMD. Yeah. 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 Uh, then another thing I want to highlight with uh, with this uh, mouse, uh, of course we had a couple of things that that you know do rate weight reduction. This is one of the things. So we made the housing really thin, so it's like one millimeter thick at most points. Um, and on the right side, you can see a, a more general uh, one. We didn't activate windows. No, I know we, we never do. We never do. Uh, but here you can see it, basically it's two millimeters. So do, don't count all the way up to here. But this is the outer shell, basically. And you can see this is two millimeters. So it's, it's basically double the, the It's also something thickness. that I noticed when, when you were showing the mouse from the side, the PCB. Yes. You can actually see. Can you, do you have it near you? Mm. Uh, put it down you here, because I needed, well I needed the all the PCB space to swipe like hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely thin. Uh, the PCB itself. Yeah. Yes, and actually, I, I even have a, also a picture of that. But yes, I mean, because that's the thing. I can show it, but since I don't have another PCB to, to hold next to it, you know, is it thin? Is it is it thick? I don't know. You know, you need to be able to compare it to something. Yeah. Uh, but to give you some frame of reference, here's a, here's a, the next slide. Yes. Uh, oh. oh. Yes, here we go. Uh, and it's maybe a bit hard to see, but this is a uh, more traditional PCB. Um, so this is the thickness here. Uh, and this is the PCB on uh, GM41. So as you can see, indeed, it, it is uh, also pretty much like about half or something uh, as, as thick. So we also, this is also one of the things how we try to save weight, is to uh, make the PCB uh, as thin as possible, while still, of course, maintaining integrity and signal strength and stuff like that. Uh, on, on older products or regular uh, uh, products or other gaming mouse even uh, where weight is not really a factor, you will see that they will go for a thicker PCB just because that's that's like the industry standard. Um, Probably so, cheaper as well. Yeah, indeed. So for thinner PCB, you'll have to have specific engineering to still, uh, you know, put all the traces in there and, and connect all the components, but, you know, keep it uh, very thin. For example, with, with motherboards, Mike, your experience is probably in mine as well with graphics cards, is that actually PCBs have gotten thicker with, with more layers, 
Um, so that's because you know, it's the, uh, the products are becoming more complex. Yeah, yeah. And there's more traces to, in there, yeah. more layers. Yeah. And you want to um, basically isolate the different parts from each other. So, for example, on a motherboard, you have the memory traces, yeah. but you also have the audio, uh, audio circuitry, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the VRM design, yeah. PCIe it all, lanes. Yeah, it all goes through that PCB, but yeah. you don't want them to interfere with each other. Exactly. So that's why you have several yeah. layers. And, and some of, course, of the top-end models even go yeah. up to 10 layers. For yeah. And of course, like a, a mouse compared to a, a graphics card or a motherboard, of course, a mouse is a very uh, uh, simple it's product, a simple it, product yeah, in, in it, comparison it doesn't have nearly as many uh, components or, or things that need to uh, have their own layers of pcb uh, but yeah again this is one of the ways that we made it thinner and this is what i what i mentioned before um, on the top here you have a, a more general gaming mouse i think this might even be uh uh looks like a one of our older models maybe a gm10 or something like that or GM08? I, I think it's a GM08. It no, because the GM08 had, had the weights, and I'm not sure. Well, they might be here. Might be, yeah. yeah, it might be. I think yeah. it's a GM08, looking at the shape. Yeah, but anyway, you can see here, the, the mouse sensor is here. You guys see the cursor? Yeah, uh, the mouse sensor is here. Uh, the lens is right there, and there's a little LED here to, to act as, uh, you know, the, the light Illuminate source. the surface. Exactly. So um, your sensor can track it. So, and these are all separate. Now at the bottom here, you can see this is the um, the sensor on. Uh, well, I mean, I can show it on the actual PCB as well. Then this is the sensor on the GM41 lightweight. So there is no separate uh, light source. There is no separate uh, lens. It, there's just there's just the sensor here, and it's all included. So that's why if I switch it to the bottom and I try to take this thing, I'm not sure if I can. Oh, yep. Yes, I can. <laughs> break it um, <laughs> well not really break it but yeah so here's the lens and as you can see that it's, it's the same basic structure basically inside um, and then the rest is all included in the uh, the light source is also I think it's somewhere uh, in inside the the sensor here it's probably the, the little incline there but it's uh, it's built in basically. So again, this also saves a little bit of weight, um, and altogether, that's what makes the the real difference here. Um, and nowadays, they're mostly infrared, so you cannot um, see that the surface is being illuminated. Yeah. Um, yes. Maybe if we show the bottom of the mouse of that. One. Yes, this one. Like here, yeah, for there you can, for example, see the red LED. <laughs> Very clearly, yeah. So a lot of these, and you, you've also had like a blue track and stuff like the blue lights, mm -hmm. which enables you to uh, track even across Maybe glass surfaces. Maybe through a surfaces. camera, you might be able to see it on the other one as well. On this one? Yeah. Sometimes you can slightly see. I mean, can the human eye sometimes is difficult. Can you make it look like into the mouse? Sometimes you can slightly see it. It's uh, quite difficult though. Uh, it's also, for example, in the past when you had laser mice, yeah. um, you could actually see them uh, using your webcam. So if you... Um, lift them above the surface you could see a dot from the laser on the surface but you yeah. could not see it in real life yeah so no this is very difficult to yeah. actually get uh, any light to show but yeah you get the you get the idea um, but the thing I really want to highlight also is that uh, Nvidia reflex so this is something that's not new I mean with the RTX 30 series Nvidia also uh, uh, introduced the, the reflex feature uh, but why I want to highlight this is because there is uh, next to reflex itself which I'm going to explain in just a minute if you guys don't know what it is um, there is also the latency analyzer which is uh, kind of added on to the reflex part now reflex is meant to um, I guess I can I can just quickly cover that part um, to reduce system latency so uh, when talking about latency a lot of people will probably think about you know LAN connections or, or you know internet latency that's your ping not in the game exactly <laughs> that that's not what this is uh, what this is is uh, your in-system latency so that means and I've, it's like actually the, the overview here all the way from the inputs or your mouse basically the moment you click that there's a whole process that goes uh, that that everything has to go through before it actually shows up on screen and, and stuff happens in, in the pixels and your gun fires so this is the whole process of uh, clicking the mouse uh, there's there's a, a latency in the peripheral, of course, because of the uh, the system, and it has to travel up a 
so you, you click the button that um, activates uh, a little pulse that then has to travel up the uh, cable of the mouse into the USB port uh, to your PC. Uh, that then goes to the CPU, as you can see. There you also have the game latency because obviously you're playing a game. So at the same time the CPU is running the game and then this uh, pulse comes in that, hey, you know, we need to fire the gun because they click the button. Uh, then there's a render queue because obviously there's a lot of things going on. The game has to be rendered, uh, uh, your enemies have to be rendered, everything is going on there. Uh, so this pulse and, and the fact that the gun has to fire has to get a place somewhere in, in the whole chain of events that the PC and your CPU and your GPU are rendering, all the frames. Uh, so it's, it's given a place somewhere in there. And then once that's done, so that's the whole render latency, then it still has to make its way from the GPU in the display cable. So that could be display port, for example, from the GPU to the screen. And then the refresh rate of the monitor decides basically when the, the frame where your gun actually fires actually shows up on the screen. So this whole process is your basically simplified, but that's your, your basically your system latency. Um, and what Reflex tries to do, or at least does, is that it will uh, try to make sure that the, um, your pulse basically of, hey, we're firing the gun and, and the communication of all these things, the processes in between, is optimized. So it doesn't get stuck somewhere in the render queue, which then causes an extra 10 milliseconds of delay or something just within your system. Um, so basically what it does is that one component doesn't need to wait for the other component yes, yeah. in order to do something. Because again, there's a whole lot that your PC is doing while you're gaming and, and then you click the button and it, it has to be rendered and, and interpreted and, and turned into an action and, and then into the display. Um, so it has to be given a place somewhere and sometimes that is delayed by all of the other stuff that's already in the queue basically to be uh, to be rendered. Um, but anyway, long story short, uh, the goal here is then to uh, reduce system latency. And again, this is nothing to do with your connection, your internet connection, but just in your system. Uh, and these are slides by NVIDIA themselves. Uh, and they say basically in, in supported games like Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Fortnite, Valorant, you can uh, get the, um, you can get the latency down, your system latency down by a considerable margin um, anywhere, well, by half in some cases is what we've seen. Uh, but it really depends on uh, your system, the game, and even the situation, because what we've seen from tests is that it's mostly in, uh, in high, when you're GPU bound. So most competitive titles, you won't be maxing out your GPU, some uh, exceptions obviously, but um, yeah, in, in, it's mostly when you are GPU bound, so when your GPU is maxed out, basically, that's when you will notice the biggest uh, gain from, from Reflex and when it will be able to, to optimize things a bit more. Uh, when you are just running into CPU restrictions because you know, your GPU is just way too powerful, Valorant is a good example, not very GPU intensive, uh, but at hundreds of frames per second, like 600 FPS, your uh, CPU is m mostly the bottleneck. So there it might make some difference, but probably a bit less. Um, I see a question in YouTube chat. John is asking, can we overclock our mouse DPI? <laughs> no, your, like the resolution of your no. mouse, you cannot really overclock. There is, um, for example, some vendors use interpolation on their sensor. And that basically means that for uh, every pixel, they divide it into multiple pixels yeah. to increase the resolution. Um, but that will cost you sensor performance if you do that. Um, so that way you can get a really um, high resolution on your mouse. But for example, the, the uh, speed that it can properly track will suffer from it. So it's not something I would recommend. So it w in the end, I think also you could say that comes at the cost of accuracy at some point. Mm, yeah. yeah, especially if, if you run on low sensitivity, then yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, something um, that is more common to overclock your mouse is your polling rate. Yes. Um, that was especially in the past when uh, mice were not uh, 1000 hertz polling rate already. Uh, for example, the, the Intelli mice that, um, that uh, Peter mentioned before, yeah. the old optical Microsoft ones. Yeah. Um, they were 125 hertz by default, yeah. and many people overclocked them to, to, for example, 500 hertz or even 1,000 hertz for better uh, performance. Yeah. 
Um, but nowadays, um, for yeah, example, this mouse can standard. already do a thousand hertz yeah. uh, by default, and yes. even even entry level gaming mice can already do one thousand hertz. So yes. then you're already at one millisecond response time as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so nowadays, it's not that useful anymore. I would say. Um, also, the the higher you go at some point from from you know one millisecond already, I mean that's not really noticeable by itself. Again, there's multiple things to consider within even a system, and then if you're playing multiplayer online, there's even the, the your internet connection to the server that you have to. Consider. And in this slide, you can already see what the system latency is. Yeah, yeah, this is this, just the system latency. Yeah. That's uh, and again, this is how it shows that you know the more you are uh, GPU bound, the more uh, effect it will have. So uh, at higher resolution, so you have uh, 1080p at the bottom. You have uh, 1440p in the middle and uh, 4K or 2160p at the top. And you can see at the top resolution, so 4K, you have the biggest benefit uh, because you are more likely to be running into GPU uh, boundaries, basically, or be C GPU limited. Kun uh, is asking, is 800 DPI normal? Because I play on uh, 2800. No, there is not really something that is normal no. or abnormal. No. I would say don't go too low, for example, 100 or 400 will yep. cost you some skipping that we saw before. Um, I think 800 is already fine. Um, 2800 yeah. is fine as well. In the past, uh, sensors used to have a native resolution where they performed significantly better than in other resolutions. But nowadays, for example, with the 3389 that's in this mouse, um, it doesn't matter that much anymore what DPI value you use. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely no no problem in, in using 2800 DPI. So don't worry no. about it. No. Uh, right. Anyway, um, so so quite useful. However, uh, and we've seen here there's there's a couple of games here. So uh, what's necessary to be able to use this? Of course, you need a, an NVIDIA graphics card. I think anything up from GTX 900 series uh, upwards. So newer cards are um, supported. You need the latest drivers from NVIDIA. But I think this was introduced in. September, October last yeah, year. So like yeah, if you've upgraded uh, or updated your drivers anywhere between now and uh, and, and October, half you should be fine. Yeah. Exactly, you should be fine. Um, and then lastly, there, there's no real hardware requirements other than, for example, using a 900 series uh, GTX 900 series or newer graphics card. Um, but the game has to support it. It's more like something that's built into the game engine because basically it lets the game engine. Um, <laughs> Communicate better with the hardware to to optimize. Uh, the, Looks the like Eric is in the chat. He says, "I'm happy they didn't invite me." Talk I, two know, hours I know. About Somebody was already saying, "Don't be rude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, yeah something, and then um, yeah. So so make sure that if you want to test this out, that a, a game uh, uh, the game. Um, supports it. It is built into the game engine, so there's not that many games yet, but there will be more. Rainbow Six Siege, I think, was one of them. Uh, as I said, uh, Valorant uh, is also included. You have to enable it in the game settings, by the way. So it's not something you uh, you can activate in in the NVIDIA drivers. That's not how it, it worked. That way with uh, uh, ultra low latency mode. That's something you could and still can enable in the NVIDIA drivers, but uh, with Reflex, that's something it, uh, that can only be activated in the game if it supports it. So you'll have to look for the option in the game if the game is listed uh, here to be able to try it. Um, and we uh, actually wanted to highlight that there's even a step beyond that. Uh, that's, that's all nice, but to be able to test that and, and, and notice the difference, obviously, well, we hope you notice the difference by just enabling it if you do, uh, but to be able to um, actually put the uh, latency on the screen, like for example, the, the ping uh, latency that you have in a game, that's like a number that shows on the screen. So if you could actually show it in a number on the screen, that would make things more easy to, to see in, in terms of numbers and not just uh, feeling or experience if you notice it or not. You can see the numbers if it works or not. Yeah, so it's measured in milliseconds. Exactly. So there it. are tools for that, of course. Uh, I think uh, also with the 30 series, NVIDIA provided some, like the LDAP tools and stuff like that, to also uh, to, to media to, to measure this kind of latency. Uh, but some monitors have now been introduced. Uh, our uh, 360 hertz uh, G Sync monitor, the NXG, uh, it's right here, NXG. Uh, 253R. Um, 
yeah, we will feature that very soon in a live stream. We actually wanted to see if we could get it here for this stream so we could show you, but unfortunately we didn't get the sample on time. Um, but that has uh, something included in the G-Sync module that is able to show that uh, in the in the uh, game. So what you will have is something like, I mean, this is a generic overview here below, but basically what it does is that if you have a, a compatible product, so a monitor that has the 360 hertz G-Sync module um, and a, a mouse that's certified for it, and the GM41 lightweight is certified for uh, the reflex latency analyzer. Uh, what you then have is in game, you can toggle a performance overlay that shows you in real time the the mouse latency, the system latency basically. Uh, you can actually divide it up into several parts. So the complete system latency, the PC plus dis display latency, and uh, the mouse, so only basically the, the latency that the mouse adds. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Again, it doesn't really help you to, um, to optimize things. That's just the reflex feature. So uh, the monitor doesn't really help you to, to get that uh, latency down any further. But you I mean, can of course, fiddle around with some settings and yeah. see what it does yes. for your... And uh, of course, 360 hertz, uh, the, the higher the, the refresh rate, the lower the latency. That is usually the rule. So what is a factor is that, for example, if you are currently running a 144 hertz monitor and you would switch to a 360 hertz, your latency just by doing that would already go down. But this will enable you to actually see what that latency is in numbers. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, just wanted to highlight that as well. And just to clarify, system latency is like yes. the, the total latency all the way from the input from your mouse, so when you click a button, all the way to when it displays on your yep. uh, monitor. When it fires into your eyeballs, <laughs> basically. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We, did, we haven't done a giveaway for uh, quite a while. Yeah, we it's were, uh, uh, very much time for a giveaway. It is, yeah. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, once every five minutes, our bot will also put a direct link to the Gleam giveaway. Why don't you do two? Yeah, that's a good idea. Because we, we kind of, yeah, we went a little while without a giveaway, so. If you already uh, participated, by the way, you don't have to sign up again because you will automatically be included in the next drawings as well. Yeah. So here we have our first uh, one, or well, the third winner for today, but Gonzlo. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. I think so, yeah, Gonslow. Congratulations. Let me draw another winner. Let me just carefully lift this out of the way. Don't destroy the correct sample. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Drawing, drawing. Why is Gleam so slow? Yeah, sometimes it takes a while. Again, it's a randomized script, so it just, uh, yeah. And, and GK, congratulations. JK. You also won a game code for... I hope that uh, doesn't mean just kidding. Because <laughs> we're not. But yeah, congratulations. You also won a uh, Watch Dogs Legion game code uh, coming out to you as soon as possible. Hope you enjoy it. Um, all right, to, to end this stream off, as I promised at the beginning, <laughs> we have a headset, uh, GH20. So uh, yeah, by the numbers, basically uh, the, the first number, so GH gaming headset two. Uh, so it's a m relatively more entry level product. Uh, still, I tested this one myself and I really like the sound quality on this. It was really surprisingly good as well. Uh, the, the build quality is also really nice. I'm just gonna do a very quick and rough unboxing for you guys. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice, uh, yeah, basic headset, and also with the uh, with uh, three and a half millimeter jack uh, connectivity, means that you can pretty much use it with any device that has a three and a half millimeter jack. Let me just quickly show it to you guys. Here we go. 
It's a really nice headset. Uh, it's, it's not trying to be too flashy. I really like the look of it as well uh, with the, uh, the the matte black finish. Um, it's still it's also really sturdy. Uh, it, you, with the, the adjustable headband, of course, here, adjustable size with the metal uh, part here, with the, so it strengthens basically the, the structural part of it. Uh, there's, there's really no creaking or something like that. Again, with, with a lot of, uh, what is it, uh, entry-level headsets or, you know, more affordable ones, you, you tend to get like, you know, the, the quality tends to be a bit less. But with this one, definitely not, not the case. It really feels really solid, um, no, no creaking, even though, of course, there's some plastics used. Uh, ear cups can um, can go like this a little bit. Um, the mic is uh, not detachable, so it, it, it is always there. You also get like a little um, pop filter. Yeah, pop filter indeed. Uh, so you don't get the uh, annoying uh, wind sounds or you know people uh, breathing into the mic. Uh, but you can you can still very easily just move it out of the way like this. If you um, want to take a bite of your sandwich. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the ear cups themselves are also really thick and, and uh, comfortable with the, the, the PU leather uh, finish. So that's really good for uh, noise isolation. Uh, they're they're uh, so it's soft a closed enough. Design. Yeah, they're soft enough for, for people with glasses like myself. Uh, sometimes if you, if you wear uh, headphones and they have like really firm uh, cushions like this, they will really press your glasses into your head and it really hurts after a while. These are soft enough that that doesn't really become a factor. They're also really nice and lightweight. So um, yeah, there's no problem having these on your head for, for multiple hours. I mean, the, the, you know, the heavier the headset, obviously, uh, yeah, it will tend to at some point cause some discomfort, but in this case, definitely not the case. Um, also some nice uh, cushioning here, also nice and thick foam for the top of your head really distributes the uh, well, the little weight that it has because again it's quite a light headset um, <laughs> robert says on youtube chat cool i also <laughs> call those hair cat hair collectors yeah. <laughs> well i have two cats and i can really <laughs> recommend uh, a robot vacuum cleaner that will make your life so much better if you have cats yeah that or uh what are those uh, naked cats called the ones like without sphinx, fur. I think sphinx cats. I don't know. <laughs> the, the ones without fur. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they are not fluffy. No, they're not. No. They look cute. They're, they're, they're still trying to be cute, but they look I think a bit. They are cute, and they, they they feel very soft. Did you ever pet one of those? No. They, they, <laughs> even though they don't have any fur, they, they're still extremely soft. It's just it's strange. It's, it's, you're looking at them, and uh, for me, it's just like there's something wrong. There's there's something not. No, this is not how it's supposed to be for some reason. Still very cute. They, they always look like they're cold. They probably are. You want to give they're them a sweater. not wearing a jacket. Yeah, you want to give them a sweater or something like that. Anyway, um, all right. Um, inline mic, uh, sorry, inline uh, controller, of course. Uh, so for a quick volume uh, up and down a, a wheel here and a little toggle that you can quickly mute your microphone. Uh, very handy. It's not too... Uh, uh, not too big, not too heavy either, so it's not gonna, you know, it, it really doesn't weigh anything. You almost don't notice it's there, so that's great for, uh, it doesn't really try to pull the cable down, if you know what I mean. Sometimes when a, when a remote is, uh, an inline remote can, can be quite heavy. You're not lifting weights with your neck. <laughs> no, but no, it, it can, it can, you know, sometimes we, you, know, you don't want the, the, the cable to be pulling down all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that can happen. Um, the cable is also quite nice and long. It's still rolled up here, but I think it should be like uh, almost uh, one and a half, two meters, something like that. Um, like I said, three and a half millimeter audio jack. Uh, and this is the kind that allows you to uh, connect it to a mobile device, like your mobile phone, for example. And it will not just transfer the audio to the speakers, but it's also, uh, it includes the, the microphone. So for your PC, that's gonna, you're gonna have to choose, obviously. Well, at least that's what you think, but that's why in the box. I'm just going to open it up here. Uh, there is a splitter included. So uh, you simply connect this uh, 3.5 uh, millimeter. There is a name for that. I'm, I'm missing that, but I'm not sure uh, okay. what it is. Yeah, but, uh, what it no, is? I mean like uh, when it when it's um, uh, a three or four pole. I'm not sure what, what to call that. Yeah, it's a three pole because you got yeah. uh, two for your, for your yeah, headset. Le left, you got left, left, right. right. Yeah, stereo. Yeah, left, and right, so stereo and, and microphone. And microphone indeed. Exactly. Um, 
And then, yeah, I mean, they're you often can... referred to as a combo jack as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because they combine obviously those functions. Uh, and as you can see here, the, the other ones that these are the ones that plug into your PC. So they will be either uh, speakers or a microphone. And as you can see, they have uh, fewer, uh, yeah, separated areas in the uh, in the connector. So these only have uh, yeah two basically, and these have three. So that's where you have the difference. Um, but yeah, if you just want to use them on the PC and then also use the, both the audio and uh, uh, microphone, you just on one side it's green because that one is keying out. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. The headphone one, of course. Uh, luckily, uh, also on the uh, on the connectors themselves. I'm sure, if this is uh, there's little symbols on there. One is a, a little microphone. The other one is a headset. So this one is the is the headset. Yeah, there we go. And this one is a microphone to help you, of course, identify which is which and where you need to plug it in. And nowadays on, on many notebooks, you also see like the, the combo jack. Yeah. So yeah. In, in, for many notebooks, you probably don't need the splitter. But if you use a, a PC or certain gaming notebooks also have separate connectors, yes. then um, you can simply connect the splitter. Exactly. So yeah, and I mean, uh, for me, I mean, this headset goes all the way from, uh, if, I, if I put it to the smallest setting, it's a bit small for me. It, it doesn't really cover my ears. But if I just or do you have a fat face? Make it a bit. No, I actually, <laughs> I, I tend to have not like when I when I used to wear um, hats, like baseball hats, or something, not not really baseball hats, but anyway, um, I always needed to make them really small. So it turns out apparently I have a relatively small head. Um, but yeah, if I just make it a little bit bigger and it, it closes quite nicely, as in the sound uh, insulation. Like uh, there, there's not much that I can hear around me, uh, so yeah, they're they're a great headset for, for for gaming. Again, like I said, the sound quality is also pretty freaking nice, um, especially for a more entry level product. Um, but yeah, good solid headset, I would say. Not sure if I missed any features. Let me let me just quickly check the box. There's no RGB, of course. Um, no. It's quite a, it only the essentials basically, so no yes. no RGB yeah. unfortunately, no, no, no. extra frame. <laughs> just a just a solid, really nice solid headset for a good value for the money as well. So if you have uh, some of these and you're looking for a more entry level What's headset, the price? Uh, <laughs> yeah, price performance, right? But what what is the price? I saw a question in chat. Oh, as well. sorry, what is the price? Uh, ooh, good question. I I don't know. I think it's like twenty. Uh, 20 or 25 euros, oh, euros. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but that usually translates into something yeah, similar in, in, in pounds well. or dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 20 or 30-ish. But it, again, it's like nowhere near the, the really uh, expensive headsets that, that people are looking at usually. Uh, uh, yeah, or, or for example, our GH61, which was way more expensive. Uh, again, also, USB the, headsets tend to be slightly more expensive because, yep. of course, they have their own uh, sound card. Yep, they have Whereas their own sound card. use the sound card yep. of the device you plug them into. They, they have RGB. They, they also might have, uh, you know, or will have different drivers. So these are, I think, 40 millimeters off the top of my head, which is, it's okay, but most headsets tend to have like 50 these days. Yep. Um, again, for 40 Depends, millimeters, it's I was surprised. always better, the bigger driver, but... No, but they, they can have a, a bigger, you know, sound stage and a, a little bit more reach and a, a bit and, more boom yeah. to them. But for these, I was really uh, surprised. It was still quite detailed sound. Uh, of course, you can't expect the same uh, quality level of this for, as, as a more, way more expensive headset. But yeah, I thought these were really enjoyable uh, and, and just really nice to listen to either music, uh, watch some movies. Sounded pretty saying, good. 30. Also, gaming very accurate. US dollar. There you go. Uh, well, I think you you transferred from twenty five euros to to US dollar, but no. usually in euros it includes uh, VAT. VAT. Yeah. And for the US dollar price, that's usually excluded. Yeah. Um, so that's why you often see quite similar prices, yeah. even though one euro is worth more than one US dollar. Um, but it, it usually um, includes 20% sales tax. Of course, it differs per country what the actual VAT will be. Yeah. Um, but just to give an indication, around 20% is uh, is common in Europe. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, like uh, John is also saying, uh, did you, you have uh, some headsets have the the, the built-in 7.1 uh, virtual surround? Like uh, I think uh, GH61 also has it, um, and and that's great. 
but you, these days you also have even uh, on, on Windows machines with uh, three and a half millimeter jacks, um, you can also have uh, more like Windows Sonic, I think is the, is the built-in Windows one that you can try for free. Uh, it's fun to mess around with. And I think you also have like a Dolby and yeah. BTS. Yeah, but versions. those are those are not free. Well, they I think they have like a free trial. Trial maybe. Yeah. So you can at least try it for, for like a week or a month or something like that. Um, but after that, it's, it's like a subscription fee. So you're gonna have to uh, pay up obviously. Uh, Windows Sonic is, is free. So at least if you wanna mess around with it and, and, and give it a try, yeah, see, you can yeah. always do that. And again, that, that just uh, gives you the opportunity to make your three and a half uh, millimeter gaming headset into uh, a, a, a virtual surround uh, headset as well. Doesn't doesn't uh, give good results in every situation, but don't use it for music. I would say no, definitely, and uh, movies mixed mm. results. I would say um, I, I wouldn't use it in movies yeah. either. But if for games, it it, can it be should nice be good because games, games yeah. you know, the, the game uh, gives and and usually has built-in directional audio anyway. Um, and depending on your headset, they either will have ways to uh, interpret and and display that in in audio ways or not um, and with more entry-level headsets or you know um, three and a half millimeter jacks tend to have uh, not have those things built into them but with using things like windows sonic or uh, dolby atmos indeed many people are very skeptical about surround with only yeah. two speakers of course yeah um, but you also have two ears and you can hear directional sound for example if you go to youtube and search for a virtual Final? haircut oh yeah yeah. Try it out just with a set of stereo, yeah. Uh, yeah. just stereo headset. It's surprising indeed what you can do with it. It's it's obviously yeah. it's it's trickery, you know, yeah. to, to to try and trick your brain into you know into hearing into, front, rear, from different top, directions, bottom, etc. Um, but but you know there are different ways to do that, and it's. Uh, at, cool. at the very least, it's it's fun to experience to play around with and just to see. Okay, what is that like? How does that work? How does that change um, the experience? So yeah. If you have the time and you feel like playing around with it, I would recommend it. Yeah, I've also tried it. was quite surprised by it. It was nice. Anyway, um, yeah, let's do one more giveaway. One more winner for today. Yes. Always one more winner. To that one. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't uh, participated yet, you can, uh, well, you can still do it. Uh, if you're really fast. Yeah, you have to be really fast. Amazon.com slash two slash insider. You have uh, to beat me to it. <laughs> perform a couple of actions. Uh, Mike is holding for me to finish. Uh, perform a couple of actions. The more actions you perform, the better your chance of winning. If you have loyalty bonus points, you can uh, throw them in there. Uh, you can even have a better chance of winning. Um, then let's announce the uh, yeah. live stream for next week because then we're going to talk about some motherboards. Yes. Um, so Intel 500 series, we already talked yeah. about uh, Z590 in January. If you missed it, you can also check it out on YouTube. You can view it on demand. Um, but of course, we're also uh, coming with B560 and H510 motherboards. Uh, of course, all of them are um, will be ready for the 11th gen Intel Core processors that are coming out later. Yeah. Um, and they can also work with the current 10th gen um, Intel Core processor series. Um, so make sure to check it out. Um, it's gonna be gonna be a good one. Gonna be yeah, interesting. Yeah, gonna be a good one for sure. We got many boards to show you there. Uh, answer many questions, and uh, we hope to see you there, same place and the same time. Exactly. So let's get out with a winner. And our last winner of today uh, of a game code of Watch Dogs Legion is um, Nasmo. Nasmo. Greg Nasmo. 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 I don't know. N A Z M U L. Yes. Congratulations. You Congrats. also won a game code of Watch Dogs Legion. And I think, yeah, that concludes today's stream. So thank you all for joining. I hope you, uh, if nothing else, you were entertained or you learned some new things uh, about uh, gaming mice and sensitivity and all that kind of stuff. And maybe a few cool tricks that you can try at home to, to see and test uh, your own mouse that you're using. And um, yeah, we hope to see you guys next week. Thanks for watching and see you then. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.